hit, and uh, he can pick up his cleats after the ball game. 97 yards on that touchdown. This is the Cox 4 Game of the Week. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wildcat Stadium in Walker, Louisiana. We are here for a big 5-4-5A district matchup as we get set to have the Walker Wildcats battling the Denham Springs Yellow Jackets. I'm Jimmy Frederick along with Jeff Palermo. Tressie Leindecker will not be with us, unfortunately, tonight. She had a prior engagement. Somehow we'll muddle through, right, Jeff? I think we'll do just fine. We have got a big football game here, and this is a, a, a tremendous rivalry, Jeff. This thing goes all the way back to 1959 when these two teams first met. 26 meetings, 24, 1, and 1, all in the Yellow Jackets' favor. But that changed hands last year as the Walker Wildcats won that one uh, 10 to 7 last year for the first time to ever beat the Yellow Jackets. And you know Denham Springs has not forgotten about that loss. They're coming out trying to get a little revenge on Walker's home field. Without question. Let's take a look at Palermo's point of the game brought to you by Peretti Jaguar. Jeff. What does Denham Springs have to do offensively first and foremost to win this football game? Well, for Denham Springs, head coach Nolan Gill would like to see his team control the clock. Denham has had trouble scoring some points here tonight. They got to keep it away from Chris Hawkins and that Walker offense. And then defensively, Denham Springs, they need to shut down Hawkins, one of the best running backs in the state. He's heading to LSU on a verbal commitment. and. It's going to be difficult for Denham Springs to try to bottle them up, but teams have been able to do it this year. And then for Walker, well, they're going to have to just let Mr. Chris Hawkins run wild here tonight. They're going to put a lot of the pressure on him to bust some long runs to get their offense going. And then also defensively, they're going to want to force Denham Springs to throw the football here a little bit tonight. Denham Springs will talk a little bit about their quarterback situation. Benton Higgins making his first start since injuring his ankle after injuring his ankle a couple weeks ago against Sanima. So they're going to probably want to test him and see if he's going to be able to get the job here, here tonight, get the job done here tonight in Walker. Well, this is the first of three rivalry Friday nights. We're at Walker getting ready for the Walker Wildcats hosting the Yellow Jackets of Denham Springs. Don't go anywhere, folks. Kickoff just seconds away. We'll be back right after this on the Cox 4 Game of the Week. thing off this is our first rivalry Friday night it's Denham Springs five miles down I-12 to Walker High School we're at Walker uh, Wildcat Field and it will be Denham Springs receiving the kick they lost the toss actually Walker lost or won the toss they decided to defer and they will give the ball to the Yellow Jackets Jeff and we are set to rock and roll well it seems to me that uh, Walker is already wanting to play some field position here give Denham Springs the football first see if Walker's defense can stop the Yellow Jacket offense three plays and out and then get their offense on the field and of course they'll get the ball to start at the second half but let's see if Denham Springs can get in a, a sustained drive here to start the football game Jareth Mears uh, another good field goal kicker will kick it away and he starts it off for the Walker Wildcats it will be taken at the 10 yard line and he's got some running room up the middle and he will be down right there at the 26 yard line that was number 23 receiving the kick Tasman Stewart we're going to call his number an awful lot he is the running back that we expect to see only a sophomore and uh, we are ready to rock and roll let's take a look at the starting lineup first and foremost for the Walker defensive players. Let's take a look at them first. Well, let's wait until after this first play and then we'll take a look at the starting lineups. It will be number two, Benton Higgins, starting off at quarterback. He'll take it from the shotgun. We've got four receivers into the football game and it's going to be a delayed handoff play action. Handing off to Tasman Stewart and Stewart goes nowhere and loses a couple of yards on that one. Kirby McGregor, we're gonna talk a lot about him from his middle linebacker spot and it brings up second and 12. Let's take a look at the linebackers and backs for Walker. First of all, Baker at strong, strong safety, Stevenson. The cornerback, Hawkins. Another cornerback, Brown. And then McGregor, we just called his name, Grayer and Wren. We'll take a look at the line momentarily. Got back to the original line of scrimmage, Jeff. It'll be second and 10. Trips to the near side. Quick pass now out into the flats. It's number 45, Tyler Juno, the fullback. He picks up eight yards down to the 37-yard line. Let's take a look at the defensive line now for the Walker Wildcats. 
just three of, well, excuse me, four of them up there. We have Billy Mattingly, Dylan Teal, Matt Hill, and Kendall Rodri. Of course, the defensive coordinator, Dwayne Severio. And they've got a very good defense, only giving up 18 points per ball game so far this season. We'll take a look at the Yellow Jacket starters in just a second. After this play, it's third and one. The ball resting at the 37-yard line. And again, it's Benton Higgins under center as we see Juno coming in motion. Stewart will be stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He falls forward. Jeff, did he have it? It's close uh, to a first down. Getting in there quickly for Walker was Dylan Teal, defensive end, who's been a starter on this team for the last couple of years. But that was a big third down and one conversion if Denham was able to get it. And I think they're going to have to bring the sticks all the way from the other side. So, nope, they're going to say he's short of the first down, bringing up fourth down. So let's take a look at the Denham Springs offensive line. Quickly, it's Dugat, Blau, Burks, LeBlanc, and Walker. And they've got fourth and about a half a yard to go. And let's see if they're going to go for it. We'll take a look at the backs in just a second. Looks like Coach Nolan Gill is going for it here for Denham Springs. This is quarterback is heading over to the sidelines to get the play. Benton Higgins, who's coming into this game, 52 of 130 for 486 yards, has yet to throw a touchdown pass this season and has been intercepted six times. But quarterback sneak Jimmy and maybe the second effort he was able to get it. I think so, Jeff. I think they're going to give it to him. They're going to spot the ball just shy of the 40-yard line, and that will be enough for the first down. So a good call early. They wanted to control the clock, and so far they have done that. Here's the look at the starting offensive backfield. It's Pusho. We thought may start at quarterback, but they went ahead and went with, with Higgins. Tasman Stewart, the running back. Tyler Juno, the fullback. Pusino and uh, Turner and also Henderson, the wideouts, and, of course, the head coach, Nolan Gill. Nolan Gill in his fifth year here at Denham Springs. Last year, the Yellow Jackets 1-9, and, and so far this season, Jimmy, off to a tough start as well at 1-6. and six. Again, the draw to Tasman, and it goes nowhere. A good effort that time by the green defense right there for the Walker Wildcats. Walker giving up only 18 points a game, and for Denham Springs, whose offense has really been struggling, they've only scored 17 points in the last three games. Let's look at the sprint instant replay as they hand it off to the sophomore, Tasman Stewart, who has almost 400 yards on the season, but look at how many green jerseys are there to bottle that play up and bring up second down and 11. Loses a yard on the play, the same basic formation. This time it's going to be a little play action pass oh. off the hands of Jeremy Turner, the sophomore receiver, out in the flats, and uh, that will bring up a third down. Yeah, it just seemed like Jeremy Turner took his eyes off the football. The play was open, a little screen pass on the far side, and just little mistakes like that. It's a big reason why Denham Springs has only one victory this season. The Walker Wildcats, Jimmy, we've uh, talked about their plight. Three and four, 0 oh and three in district play, but they need, and Coach Gayran told us this, they really need to, to win out or have a strong finish here if they want to make the playoffs for the first time since 2001. Devin Pusho is lined up in the backfield, and the ball is battered up. It's intercepted by Hawkins. Hawkins takes it at the 49-yard line, still on his feet, and he will finally be thrown to the turf at the 34-yard line, and it just simply bounced off the shoulder pads of its, of its intended receiver coming across the middle, and great hands that time for Hawkins. Sprint instant replay will show Benton Higgins' seventh interception of the season as it hits off the hand of his receiver, and then Grace Great eye-hand eye coordination by Chris Hawkins to pull that one down. And Walker will start off in excellent field position for their first drive of the night with 8.32 left to go here in the first quarter. We'll take a look at the starting lineup offensively for the Walker Wildcats in just a second right after this play. But the quarterback, Michael Lockhart, is second year starting, and it's going to be a quick pitch to Hawkins. He's the commitment at LSU, spins his way across the 30-yard line to the 29-yard line, picking up a solid five yards. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. The offensive line, first and foremost, is Justin uh, West, Blake Simino, Michael Abair, Eric Simino, the other guard, Corey Greer, the tackle, and Kirby McGregor. The tight end also plays a uh, linebacker on that defense for the Walker Wildcats. We'll take a look at their backs in just a second. Brings up second and five. A good effort that last time for Tasman Stewart. This time it's going to be a handoff to the fullback. Looks like Cody Wren busting his way across the 25, well, almost to the 25-yard line. He'll be just short of the first down. 
Here's the backfield. It's Lockhart. Todrick Stevenson, excellent running back and cornerback. Chris Hawkins, we've talked a lot about. Cody Wren, also a fine fullback. Cody McMacklin, a wide receiver, and Nick Gillespie will be in there an awful lot. John Garan, the head coach in his 11th year here at, I think that's his 12th year, I believe, here at Walker High School. A handoff again to Stewart. Stewart finds a seam up the middle, and he will lumber his way to the 15-yard line. They get the 14, buddy. Just a strong run by Chris Hawkins as he was able to bust through the line of scrimmage. Chris Hawkins just a, so far a, a huge season already as uh, he's rushed for 1,189 yards coming into this game. He has 13 touchdowns on the season. And for Denham Springs, they got to figure out a way to try to slow him down. He is seventh in the state overall and first in 5A. He gets across the 10-yard line. That will be Tasman, Stu uh, excuse me, uh, Hawkins again running the football. And he picks up another seven yards on the carry. Brings up second down and three. You have to give a lot of credit to Chris for Chris Hawkins' success this season to the offensive line. They got five seniors on that old line, and you saw the huge hole that they were able to open up, making the touchdown saving tackle was Michael Bemister on the stop. There's a good shot from our prime industrial shot there. And there's a great cut for Hawkins. Hawkins dances into the end zone. He goes in from I believe seven yards out and an excellent effort that time as he cut to the left and then back to the right. Untouched into the end zone. Six points for the Walker Wildcats and there's a great shot of the Walker fans. Let's take a look quickly at the uh, sprint instant replay. We may hold off on that. We will have the Peretti point after first and foremost and then we'll look at that replay. Well, the excitement has already begun here in Walker High School as the kick is up and good. Jareth Mears puts it through. We have a 7-0 ball game. The Wildcats of Walker drawing first blood against the Denham Springs Yellow Jackets. We'll be back right after this on the Cox 4 game of the week. Who's tired of paying $5 for a bag of peanuts? Who's tired of paying huge overage charges to your wireless company? What if Sprint got rid of ugly overages? Check it out. With the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible Plan, 100 extra minutes never cost more than $10. Other plans charge at least $40, so talk all you want. Or talk less and pay less. You uh, went over your barbecue minutes. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. I hadn't seen him in a while. I wasn't sure if he'd recognize me. So I jogged his memory. Again. And again. <laughs> at the end of the career, I think, right there, girls start punking uh, people. Maybe you yeah, get a number or something. <laughs> yeah, at least get a date on Please. it or something. <laughs> I still don't know if he knows my name. But I'm pretty sure I left an impression. Watch 44 right here, Jeff. Well, it's Kirby McGregor who kind of pushes out, and then the one thing that makes Chris Hawkins an excellent running back is his cutback ability. And once he saw that hole open up on the inside part of the offensive line, he took it in there for six. So it was the interception by Hawkins that gave Walker excellent field position, and he finished it off with a seven-yard touchdown run. Mears gets it to Turner. Turner takes it to the 11-yard line. He's got a little running room here to the near side before being run out of bounds at about the 23-24 yard line. And a good effort that time for the Walker special teams guys to, uh, to run Turner out of bounds. Seven to zero is our score. We have 618 left to go here in this first quarter of play. So glad you've joined us on the Cox Court Game of the Week. Jimmy, that peak performance physical therapy drive looks this way. Walker went four plays, 34 yards, capping it off with the seven yard touchdown run by Chris Hawkins. And for uh, Chris Hawkins now, He's got 14 touchdowns out of the season. Wow. Puso's put to the near side, and it's going to be Higgins throwing from his to his tight end, and he is going to be just nailed at the line of scrimmage. He doesn't go very far. That was Juno coming from the tight end spot, and Juno was hit immediately, Jeffrey. Well, Denham Springs coach Nolan Gill wanted to throw the football here a little bit, and so far with Benton Higgins, they have been trying lining them up in the shotgun formation. And it's just a quick little out pattern that the wide receiver runs here, but 
Walker is all over it and a nice job by the Wildcat defender, Corey Jackson, to make the stop. So it brings up a second and 10. He goes nowhere on first down. Again, the same basic formation, four receivers and a lone setback. And it's going to be Tasman Stewart getting the football. He's got a little bit of a hole, but it just collapses on him so quickly. Very strong defensively, as you see a bunch of green shirts in there. Magnificent job again for the Walker defense. It was looked like Dylan Teal in on the stop along with some other folks. There's a good cut look at the Walker head football coach, John Gayran, who's in his 11th season here. 56 victories as the head football coach of the Wildcats. Last year, Walker, four and six. They're looking for their first playoff berth since 2001. And the seniors on this team know what this game, knows what this game means for them to get a victory here tonight, keeping those playoff hopes alive. Ran a screen pattern there, Jimmy, and it was just the pass was overthrown, underthrown, I should say, but Walker defended it very well. So Denham Springs on their second offensive drive of the night go three plays and out, and they're punting it over to Walker. It's going to be Manuel doing the honors kicking, and we saw him before the ball game. He's an all-district punter from last year, and he can really boot the football. He's got a nice tight spiral, and to receive the kick is going to be Number 25 set to receive the kick, and that's uh, Donnie Rowland. And we've got a timeout on the field, and we will take it as well. 7-0 to is our score. 4.45 left to go here in this first quarter. Back on the Cox Board Game of the Week in a second. When you're looking for Q and nothing else will do, Dreamland Barbecue. For the best ribs, barbecue sauce, and catering, they ain't nowhere like Dreamland. Try a real man, you'll declare, ain't nothing like them, nowhere. Dreamland barbecue, ain't nothing like them, nowhere. Wherever there is a heart of a champion, there must be something to help it prevail. Wherever there is a burning desire to excel, there must be someone to count on to help make it happen. The hearts of champions are many on the courts and playgrounds at Baton Rouge, and Red Stick Sports proudly fills the needs of these champions on the courts and fields of dreams come true. You supply the heart. We'll supply with what else you need to succeed. Red Stick Sports. And we're back to action. It's going to be, again, Manuel kicking this ball away. Set to receive it, number 25, Donnie Rowland. This is a boomer. Coming up is Rowland. Rowland's going to take it. He doesn't make the fair catch, and he's going to be hit three times. Still on his feet. Amazingly gets his way for a couple of yards across the 40-yard line. And again, great field position, Jeff. Well, you got to love the determination by Donnie Rowland. As plenty of Denham Spring players were there to make a tackle right away as soon as he retrieved the punt or caught the punt, but he was able to dodge a lot of potential tackles. It only gets about a three or four yard return, but it was exciting to watch. <laughs> and really, Jimmy, he was one, one missed tackle away from busting that one, possibly all the way to the end zone. Hawkins gonna be the lone setback. He's gonna receive the pitch from Lockhart. He's got some running room. The ball's loose on the oh, field, man. still loose. It's going forward to the 35 yard line, picked up by number 20 for the Denham Springs Yellow Jacket still on his feet. He's got some running room to the 40 yard line. Cuts back against the grain. He's going the distance to the 10, five touchdown. And there is no flags on the field and Hawkins is down. Oh man, we got a lot going on here, Jim. Jimmy, a big fumble recovery for a touchdown. We also have Chris Hawkins who is down. He fumbled the football and it was Keith Hickman who picked up the football at about his own 30. Walker had plenty of chances to tackle him right away. They weren't able to, and then he was able to take it. But right now, a lot of concern on the Walker sidelines for their star running back, Chris Hawkins, who is down. And Jimmy, it looks like the training staff, uh, it's kind of tough to tell from that camera angle, but hopefully he'll be able to get up. He was injured two games, at least two games last year. And uh, 
Todrick Stevenson came in and did a great job for him, but he missed two games through an injury. He's been very healthy so far this season. Of course, all we can do is hope that he's uh, that he's okay, and it looks like they're getting it up right now. And you see a great shot of Nolan Gill and his coaching staff, and they have just turned the tide here a little bit as Hawkins is coming off on his own power, but limping a little bit on that right leg. Yeah, well, that right now he's having a lot of problems trying to put any pressure on that leg as Denham Springs. Boy, what a big time play for them to come up defensively on the long fumble return. It was about a, a 70 yard fumble return for a touchdown. As we'll look at on the sprint instant replay, maybe we can see where Hawkins made. There you kind of see his, uh, his foot looked like somebody came in and tackled him from behind and that jarred the ball loose and then it was the long return and we'll take a look at that a little bit later here, but first the extra point. The Peretti point after. It's going to be Kersey doing the honors. This kick is up and it is good. We have a tie ball game. Seven to seven, 408 left to go here in this first half of play. Two turnovers being very costly. Back right after this on the Cox 4 Game of the Week. Before coming to ITI, I went to a four-year college. I didn't feel like I was getting the education, the hands-on experience that I needed. I couldn't have done it without ITI. Great experience and great teachers willing to work with you one-on-one uh, -on -one basis. I applied for an entry-level technical support position, which they hired me not long after. My name is Dean Sharp. I work for a technology company, and the future is in my hands. Call 1-800-467-4484. ITI Technical College. My husband and I love to go fishing. After going through surgery for breast cancer, I realize it's the little things in life that make all the difference. When you're in a hospital, you don't want a grump. You want someone who's happy to go that extra mile for you. Someone who brings you a cup of coffee, makes you soup. I'm a cardiac ICU nurse at Baton Rouge General, but being a patient here made me appreciate how wonderful our staff really is. Julie Whitaker, Baton Rouge. back to actually we're going to take a look at a very exciting replay in just a second but let's let them kick this thing off first and foremost as it will be Kersey doing the honors he'll kick it off from the 40 yard line this will be the first time that the uh, Walker Wildcats will have an opportunity to receive a kickoff seven to seven is our score 408 left to go here in this exciting first quarter of play so glad you joined us in the Cox Board game of the week and this is a boomer it is going to skip into the end zone and out of the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Well, let's take a look at the sprint instant replay. It's Chris Hawkins running the football, and it was Justin Wax, the Denham Spring free safety that punches the ball out, and then I think he also falls on Hawkins' ankle, which might have resulted in the injury to Hawkins. But then watch Keith Hickman pick up the ball and watch as he's able to just stay on his feet somehow breaking away from tackle after tackle, and then watch Justin Wax pick him up kind of and kind of steer him in the right direction again. And then it's a foot race down the sidelines. Breaks another tackle there, and he's in there for six after that. Hickman's only a sophomore, too. Magnificent job as we see Todrick Stevens get his first carry of the night, and he gets about four on the play. The ball will rest at the 24 yard Jimmy, line. Jimmy, this is worth watching again is the determination by Hickman to stay on his feet, and he's able to get away from one more potential tackler, Todrick Stevenson, trying to catch him there at the end, but not before. Hickman gets into the end zone for a big touchdown for Denham Springs. And Jimmy, when you're struggling offensively, that is such a big play to, to have and give your team some confidence, get some points on the board. And you can see the defense is responding as they are bottling up the Walker Wildcat running backs. Wax came in and waxed win <laughs> that time. He really flew in. Let's take a look at the defensive starters for Denham Springs. We never did get to do that because it's been so quick. Justin Wax, we've been talking about him lately. Bemister, the cornerback, McGibbony, Kersey, Kinchin, Hickman, and Timmy Tate. The, the backs for Denham Springs. We'll take a look at the line. There's a great shot right there of Hawkins being retaped. So it looks like he'll be able to come in the football game. Good news for Walker fans. There's Todrick Stevenson's got the running room as he turns the corner. And he is going to get a big, big gain, but there is a flag down near the line of scrimmage, and that's going to come back, I would imagine, 
as probably a holding as he cut around that right side. You saw the speed, though, by Todrick Stevenson, and he does have some breakaway speed. When Hawkins graduates after this year, he'll be the main man in the backfield. Let's get Here the ball. Holding against Walker. Ten yard penalty, we play the down. Our, re our referee, Don Sanders, they do a great job out there. And here is uh, the Denver Springs defensive line. Well, we'll, well, let's we'll take a look at the replay. Let's Here's do that. that. First things first, Todrick Stevens. And that looked to be the tackle right there. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, well, I think that was probably your holding call. It's a big holding call that negates a big run for Walker. Stevenson last year, Jimmy, you mentioned that Chris Hawkins got hurt. And Stevenson had to come on, and, and Stevenson had a great season, yeah. rushing for over 800 yards, he's, and he's having another big year here this season. Had 62 yards last week and a win over Riverdale. This brings up third down. It will be Todrick once again, and he just waits for his blockers, and he gets another big run. But he is licked at the line at the uh, out of bounds line by number 44, and again a big hit for Jacob Percy. And we we have been told that he is a great running, a uh, great linebacker. Third down and 13. So what do you do? You give it to Todrick Stevenson and tell him to get you a first down, and he's able to do that. Wish you would get that ball in the other hand, but he follows his blockers really well and is able to get enough yardage. It was a pickup of about 17, not before Jacob Kersey bringing it down. A big first down for the Walker Wildcats after what happened to him on their last offensive drive. Kersey did a magnificent job of wrapping him up at the sideline. It's going to be Todrick Stevenson. Once again, he again sheds a tackler, and he's able to get another first down, picking up 11. This kid. Patrick Stevenson, 5'9", 174 pounds, just a little shorter than Chris Hawkins, but this could be another kid that might be playing college football one day. I mean, just look at the speed as he bursts through the line of scrimmage. And one thing Denham Springs has had trouble all season long is stopping the run last week. Tara rushed for over 270 yards against him, and Catholic had a big night on the ground against them a couple of weeks ago. So the Yellow Jackets got to figure out a way and one thing is getting penetration in the backfield. Well, that time they do get penetration in the backfield as you see uh, several of the Yellow Jackets in there to make the stop. Timmy Tate was one of them. Case a, Gyro getting in there as well, finally made the, the stop. Let's take a look at the rest of the Denham Springs starter and you see big number 40, 94, Case Gyro, 6'3", 200 pounds. Really good size on the defensive line for the L Jackets. Blackburn, 210, Smith is 200 pounds and Hunter Pickard is six foot, 170 pounds and he's a senior. And he also was in on that last tackle. There you see Hawkins walking it off as he got his ankle retaped. We saw that just a few moments ago. Again, it will be Todrick Stevenson. Stevenson picks up four yards. He's stopped by Paul Kitchen. And he picks up, uh, like I said, about four yards to the 47-yard line. Another big third down coming up for the Walker Wildcats. About a third down and seven as we have uh, about a minute left to go here in a exciting first quarter where you see both scores in seven and seven. And for Denham Springs, if they can get a nice defensive stop here, get the ball back in their hands, you know, Jimmy, a, a team for Denham that's struggling, trying to find themselves a, a victory, as looks like Walker is going to call a timeout. Getting the yep. ball back and scoring the next touchdown for Denham could be a big confidence booster. We'll take the timeout along with them. We'll be back right after this. It's 7-7 to -7 at the home of the Wildcats on the Cox Four Game of the Week. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat everyone from soccer stars to soccer moms. Now with six locations to serve you. If your doctor recommends physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name. The physical therapy choice of athletes and their moms and everyone in between. The Jaguar has a natural, unstoppable driving instinct to run. The incredibly powerful Jaguar S-Type with an eager six-speed automatic transmission. Let it loose. Lease the Jaguar S-Type for $499 a month. Visit Peretti Jaguar Baton Rouge today. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat everyone from blue chip athletes to blue collar workers. Now with six locations to serve you. If your doctor recommends physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name. The physical therapy choice of athletes, their fans, and everyone in between. There's a good shot of Coach Gayran right now as 
team marching down the field a bit with Todrick Stevenson in there, a running back, and now they've got the full house backfield. It's going to be a handoff to Wren, and Wren's going to bowl his way. He's got Close it, to a first down. Do you think he has it? Oh, that I second don't. effort. Oh, look at that. You're right. Down. Great spot. I got to give him that. And man, I tell you, everybody that's touching the football here tonight, and you can tell it's a huge rivalry game because whoever gets their hands on the football, they're running extremely hard. And for the second time in this drive, Walker is able to convert on a third down and long, and they do it by using a running play. They're not really putting the balls the ball in the hands of uh, Mike, Michael Lockhart, who is the quarterback for Walker as a senior. He's a good quarterback. He's Steady guy, knows the offense a bit. But when you got running backs like this, Jimmy, why even try to throw? Tyler Stevenson again, the power eye formation. That time stopped for a, about a yard loss. He gets it to the 44 yard line. Again, they're inside Yellow Jacket territory. You talked about Lockhart. They only threw the ball four times last week, but guess what? They completed all four passes, and that's going to do it for the first quarter of play. A very exciting one comes to an end. And we will be back after this. It is 7-7. Seven to seven. We are all knotted. Don't go anywhere, folks. Back right after this for the second quarter. You're watching the Cox 4 Game of the Week. The Jaguar has a natural, unstoppable, driving instinct to run. The incredibly powerful Jaguar S-Type with an eager six-speed automatic transmission. Let it loose. Lease the Jaguar S-Type for $499 a month. Visit Peretti Jaguar of Baton Rouge today. The summer was going pretty good, except for being totally broke. Paul had the idea that maybe we should get jobs. The only other guy he could convince to go with him was Kyle, so they went and interviewed. Thought they were going to have to wear ties every day. Turned out worse. They said the bright side was that there were plenty of places to skate behind the store. It made the workday go by a little faster. The problem was they spent more time skating than working. They decided that just wasn't fair to their boss, so they broke the news. He was crushed, of course. Now they're back. Ditched those uniforms, came out of the whole thing with a couple paychecks, and a newfound respect for the working man. See a very excited uh, band and fans for Denham Springs. Welcome back to the Cox 4 Game of the Week. It's time to start the second quarter. The difference so far, well, there really hasn't been a difference. We're tied at seven, but it's two turnovers. The defenses have played very well so far here tonight. Two turnovers being the keys. It's going to be a play action pass. The first pass of the night for Lockhart goes off the hands of Todrick Stevenson. And he throws it a little bit high that time, Jeffrey. Well, even though it was an incomplete pass for Walker, the good thing is Chris Hawkins is back in the football game as Michael Lockhart just sailed on, had that ball sail on him a little bit. And you mentioned Jimmy Lockhart's uh, pretty productive week last week against Riverdale. Four for four for 62 yards. And, but things didn't go too well for him the week before against Tara as he was two of eight, eight yards and a couple interceptions. But if you remember that game, Jimmy, we all remember that Friday night. That was oh, yeah. the night uh, Noah started building his boat. <laughs> it's going to be a handoff to Hawkins. Hawkins has got some room as he busts through the middle and then cuts it to the outside, and he looks no worse for wear on that ankle. He's still limping a little bit, but he sure didn't show it as Tim McGibbony finally runs him out of bounds, number 12, the quarterback on that side. Only a 140-pound junior. And you're just seeing a very talented backfield and a talented running back, and you're right, Jimmy, showing no effects of that sprained ankle that knocked him out of the first quarter as McGibbony holding on for dear <laughs> life as it looked like they were about ready to do the uh, triple jump there as they were running down the track. But Walker able to move the football here as they've had about 10 plays already on this drive. Another first down, first and 10, the ball resting at the 30-yard line into Yellow Jacket territory. And this is going to be another play action pass, looking again for Stevenson on a little fade, oh. and just goes off his left shoulder, is a little bit to the wrong side of him, and he just simply missed it. A pretty good pass that time, but again, good coverage. If he throws it any closer to the right side, it may have been picked off or knocked away. Jacob Breed in there on the coverage as you're looking at some of the Walker fans. The student body, we, is, uh, they're uh, dressed up and ready to dressed go. Dressed up. They're painted up. There's no clothes on those people. Tiff, Tiffy. Who's that? What's I don't that? know who Tiffy is. <laughs> we got to find that out. Where's Tressy when you well, need Well, look it? at Darth Vader. That's the guy I like. You like Darth? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a pre-Halloween affair. <laughs> 
Here we go. We got engine tight, and it's going to be a handoff to guess who? Hawkins. Hawkins spins like a super pro, and he gets across the 25-yard line to the 21-yard line, and it's close to a first. Darth Vader likes it. You, you've played video games, Jimmy. You remember where if you hit the B button, you can spin? Well, that's exactly what Hawkins does on uh, that play, just like you would see in a video game. The B button, huh? The B sure button. Man, my B button would be broke on my Sega after three weeks of it hitting that B button so bad. Wow. Third down and two, Jimmy. They've converted some third down and longs, and this one should be easy for the uh, Wildcats. Here we go again, the power eye formation. It's going to be strong to the wrong, to the other side, the left side. And guess who? They go to the big fullback, the sophomore. And Wren goes nowhere. And he's going to be about a yard short. He might probably got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Yeah, Coach Gayran's probably saying, you know what? Maybe we should just be third and seven and third and 12. Right, we pick right. up those first downs much easier. Third down and two. Denham Springs defense does a nice job in stopping Wren. Shy of a first down, and now the Yellow Jackets need a big stand. I would imagine Coach Gayran, though, is going to go to number 32 and Chris Hawkins. That's probably a safe bet, my friend. They also have a pretty good field goal kicker. We've been lucky to see some very good field goal kickers in the last few games, and it will be a staggered eye formation. No, yep. Oh, a little delay counter, and Hawkins has got some room. He cuts back against the grain. He could be in for the scores. He lets another defender fly by. Touchdown. Hawkins is the real deal, my friend. He definitely is. A 22-yard touchdown run on fourth down and one. <laughs> As amazing. I tell you, Denham Springs had a few chances in that drive to stop Walker and force the punt. Let's look at the sprint instant replay. As for Walker, give him now 15 touchdowns on the season. Almost fumbled the hand up, but then once he collects it, it's just uh, get out of the way. I'm going in there for six. And look at that little stop. That's the C button, Jimmy. That's the C button? <laughs> yeah, the stop button. Stop like and go. <laughs> That's Stop pretty tough to do to stop on a dime as they bring out the cliche and then just let the defender go by kind of like uh, Ole and then into the end zone. Here we go, the Peretti point after. It's 13 to seven right now and it could be 14 right after this and uh, it will be Mears putting it through. That will do it for that drive. We'll be back right after this. 10-11 left to go here in this first half. 14 to seven, the score, Walker lead. Want an 04 before they're gone for good? There's no time like go time at Brian Harris Chevy V8 Silverado Extended Cab LS loaded now just 18444 18444 get 13,000 off Suburban 12,000 off Tahoe's go time for an 04 is now at Brian Harris Chevy Florida East of Flannery. Who's tired of paying $5 for a bag of peanuts? Who's tired of paying huge overage charges to your wireless company? But what if Sprint got rid of ugly overages? Check it out. With the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible Plan, 100 extra minutes never cost more than $10. Other plans charge at least $40, so talk all you want. Or talk less and pay less. You uh, went over your barbecue minutes. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. Here we go. Let's take a look at the sprint instant replay. Jeff, watch how many guys miss Hawkins. Yeah, he, uh, get, what's amazing here, you see he almost fumbles the snap. We're going to count him down for you. As uh, one guy just missed him there. Here's two, three, and then by favor coming up here at a little stop. Goodbye, four, and it gets a nice block down the field by Wren to get into the end zone for six. 10-11 left to go here in this first half of play. It's now 14-7 as the Walker Wildcats take another lead here, their second lead of the night. And it will be Jareth Mears set to kick it off. Receiving it will be Turner. He's sat deep, and it's going to actually angle. It stays in bounds, I do believe. And finally, it stayed in bounds. Oh, man. And that was number 25 picking it up for Denham Springs. That's Brandon Champagne, the sophomore, and he gets a pretty good return on it. It looked like it was gonna bounce out of bounds. Jeff. Yeah, the fact though that he was able to get it past the 20 on the return, that was pretty impressive because he sat there hoping the ball would go out of bounds. It does not. So Denham Springs will start here. Their first 
Well, actually, it was only able to get to the uh, 13. I got totally confused on that one. But anyways, uh, Denham Springs' first drive of the second quarter starting with 10.06. Uh, There's the peak performance physical therapy drive. 13 plays, 80 yards, capped off by that 22-yard touchdown run by Hawkins on fourth down and one. Oh, a high snap, but he's able to take it down as Benton Higgins. Higgins is going to do a little quarterback draw, and he is tripped up as he goes out of bounds. And he will get across the 15 to the 14-yard line. He picks up, well, make it 16-yard line, excuse me, picks up about three yards. Todrick Stevenson was the man that shoved him out of, out of bounds on that play, but good job by Benton Higgins after the high snap just to take it down and try to run to the outside. Now, Walker just had a long drive, Jimmy, where they converted on a couple third downs, converted on a fourth down and ended up as a touchdown. Denham Springs offense needs to do the same thing here. It goes back to one of our keys to the game, control the clock. Three receivers, and it's going to be, yes. a, wow, it's going to be a reverse oh. halfback pass. Turner all the way down the field. Oh, my gosh, he dropped it right in his arms, and he was behind the defenders. It was Kusno. He has 13 catches on the year, and that one in it, the bread basket just couldn't hang on. It was just too wide open. Not about oh, no nice one, pass. No one Gill pulling the tricks. Wow. Out of the bag here is uh, they run a little reverse, and then just wide open as Casino's running behind the Walker defensive backs. He's got six on the way. Might have been just a, a half a step bit. past him as he tried to bring it in with one hand. It would have been a great grab. It would have been an excellent play instead. Third and seven. Again, it's a play action pass rolling out. Turner tries to get open as he is being covered very, very well that time by number 27 for Walker. That's Jacob Breeden, the junior. Let's go down to Nikki Martin for the Coca-Cola presentation. Congratulations to the Walker High School cheerleaders, the Cox Game of the Week spirit winners. Good luck. Congratulations, ladies. Back up to you, Jimmy. Thanks a lot, Nikki Martin, doing a great job down there. And congratulations to the Wildcat cheerleaders as they, they decorated two stores, and they win the Papa John's Coca-Cola Spirit Award this week. And Manuel will be set to kick this one away as he punts it from his 16-yard line. Another booming punt. And it will take a Denham Springs roll and go out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Let's take a look at what's going on Monday nights on Cox 4. You don't want to miss the prime time lineup as we have uh, Sports Monday with Lee Feinschwag at 6.30. Of course, at 6 to 7.30, you've got LSU Sports Journal. And at 9 o'clock, the coach Pete Richardson show. And 9.30, it's inside LSU. The best local programming is only on cable, only on Cox 4. We've got a player down on the field. And I to tell you the truth, it looks like one of the Walker players. D.I. Grayer is down for the Walker Wildcats. As the training staff looking at him right now, looks like he, he was. Uh, he was faced out, but they, he's now rolled him over, and it looks pretty serious, Jimmy, as he's clutching one of his coach's hands as hopefully he'll be able to get up. Yeah, we certainly hope he is okay, and we'll come back and see how he is right after this on the Cox 4 Game of the Week. Hey, sports fans, it's football time again, and as always, we're having a big sale here at Blue Ribbon Motors. That's sure to score points for the whole family. Now, here's the lineup. At Blue Ribbon Motors, we have a great selection of cars. for utilities. With low prices, low notes, and easy financing, it's hard to beat us at Blue Ribbon Motors, the home of zero down. My husband and I love to go fishing. After going through surgery for breast cancer, I realize it's the little things in life that make all the difference. When you're in a hospital, you don't want a grump. You want someone who's happy to go that extra mile for you. Someone who brings you a cup of coffee, makes you soup. I'm a cardiac ICU nurse at Baton Rouge General, but being a patient here made me appreciate how wonderful our staff really is. Julie Whitaker, Baton Rouge. This place is packed to the gills with fans from both sides. You've got Walker fans, Denham Springs fans lined up on the other side of the field along the fence. And 
the player is up and on his feet, and we're so glad to see that. And of course, we wish all these guys the very best safe play out there. Let's take a look at what's on Tuesday nights on Cox 4. You don't want to miss the primetime lineup. Go inside the schools and beyond the classroom with this school at 7.30. Find out what's happening on the Southern campus. It's SU up close at 8 o'clock and George Bill Gavoy for Health Focus at 9. The best local programming is only on cable, only on Cox 4. Again, we hope uh, that our players are okay there, Jeff. Uh, he is uh, being helped off the field and looks like it may be that left ankle. Left ankle, they got the shoe off of Dion Grayer, who's a starting linebacker, outside linebacker for this Wildcat team. And it does not look good at this point. And, you know, for Walker uh, at, at this point, you know, you don't want to, especially when you're trying to make the playoff run, you cannot afford really any se uh, serious injuries. He's a junior for this Wildcat team. Looks like he's putting some weight on it, so he may be, may be okay. We hope and wish him the best for sure. Well, we've had a very exciting football game so far with 9.35 left to go in this first half. It's 14 to seven. The Denham Springs Yellow Jackets have just punted it back to the Wildcats, and then we have a first and ten. The ball resting at the 40, uh, excuse me, the 39-yard line of the Wildcats. Of course, the Wildcats in their green uniforms, trimmed in white, and the purple and gold and white uniforms for the Yellow Jackets. Here's a handoff to Hawkins. Hawkins is going to be met at the line of scrimmage, but he does not go down very readily, and he picks up another five yards, maybe six, Jeff. It's very tough to tackle in the open field. There was a Denham Springs defensive lineman that met him at the line of scrimmage, but Hawkins with that spin move and just the strength in the upper body that is very impressive. We'll look at it on the uh, sprint instant replay. You'll see a Denham Springs player get in there quickly as uh, that looked to be number 33, Paul Kitchen, who got in there, but. Got to push B on that one. He spun away again. Yeah, so that's see, it. that's what it's all about. Got six yards on the carry. Again, it's Hawkins letting his, his uh, blockers, excuse me, get in there and uh, do a little job, making him a hole, and he gets another three yards. He's going to be short of the first down, though. Lost his shoe on that play, Jimmy. What button shoeless? do you do that? Do you hit that to, to lose your shoe? <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's just one of those quirks in the game, I think. <laughs> uh, third down and two we saw on the last drive, Jimmy. Denham Springs had plenty of times, and twice, in fact, to stop them on third downs, and they weren't able to do it. In fact, they had a chance to stop them on fourth down. A fourth down and one, similar to this, is this is a third and one. And, the Yellow Jacket defense needs to do something here on these third downs. There's a shot from our prime industrial man lift. Don't forget to go by and see them for any piece of equipment you might need. Hawkins to the line of scrimmage. I think he's got forward yeah. progress to about the 49-yard line, just past the 49, Palermo, and I think he's going to have it by a micro. Yeah, it's not by much, as you'll watch. is just enough play by the left side of the offensive line to get in there and make a little bit of a, a push there. Keith Hickman was the man that yeah. got to Hawkins first. He's the individual that has the long fumble return for a touchdown. And the officials have called it a first down at the 49 yard line for the Walker Wildcats. So another first down, they're a yard shy of midfield as they are still in their own territory at the 49 yard line. We will see Gil Gillespie come and split to the near side, and it looks like Todrick Stevens will be in the slot to the near side. Lockhart, play action pass. Looking for Todrick. Todrick makes the catch, stops at the sideline, and still on his feet. He gets about six yards on the stop, on the carry, on the catch is what I'm trying to say. And he's at the 45-yard line into Yellow Jacket territory. Well, this is what they asked Michael Lockhart to do for him as you look at the replay. You know, just make the simple pass, you know, a quick little out pattern to uh, Todrick Stevenson, just to keep opposing defenses honest, show something a little bit as far as, you know, every now and then put the ball up in the air just so everybody, or the, just so that the opposing defense isn't keying in on Chris Hawkins. Look at this uh, different formation. We've got Gillespie as they hand off to 46 Wren, the fullback, the sophomore. He gets close to the 40 two-yard line. He picks up three. He's going to be about two yards shy. And it brings up another third down. And when will Denham Springs defense make a stand here and force Walker to punt the football? 
They've had chances. I mean, Chris Hawkins has had his runs. Tyrick Stevenson has had his runs. But the Denham Springs Yellow Jacket defense has had its opportunities to stop drives. They've come close several times as they've got Hawkins in the backfield a couple of times. He was just able to get that forward progress. And again, a little big counter, and he's got a big hole up the middle, still on his feet. He gets about five yards on the carry, plenty enough for the first down. And he is down to the 38-yard line as Paul Kitchen makes the stop. Paul Kitchen coming in there and hitting Chris Hawkins. I mean, the stop and go, the footwork, I mean, that's the most impressive thing about this young man who plans to attend LSU next season. Probably going to be playing defensive back for LSU from what I understand. At least that's what they're looking at him for. Well, we've seen him intercept one pass here tonight already. Right. Pretty good hands, huh? Everybody in tight on the uh, near sideline. It's going to be a three-step drop. Going deep is nobody there, as I believe Todrick Stevenson just either didn't quite get the connection on the uh, right round or maybe uh, Lockhart threw it a little long, but it was nobody close. Well, Lockhart might have rushed at it just a little bit. I think it was supposed to be some sort of uh, corner route for Stevenson to catch it, but uh, that pass sailed on him a little bit too much. And, Brings up second down and 10. And one thing I do like about Walker is throwing the football right. on the first down. And, you know, we, we were just mentioning about trying to mix in the pass, but I think it's very important to do it on first down instead of waiting for second and third down. I mean, with, with these running backs, it's not difficult to pick up 10 yards. Hawkins with the football again, stopping and going, stopping and going, turns the corner. He's got some room. And he is still on his feet. Another one loses him, and he is into the end zone. Plenty of opportunities to tackle Hawkins. Nobody could wrap him up. He is like a, almost like a fish. He just slips through there. 37-yard <laughs> touchdown run for Hawkins, his third of the night. So let me get this straight. He's got three touchdown runs, and he's also got an interception to boot. As you'll watch Denham Springs, they think they got him corralled. And then all of a sudden, as you mentioned, kind of like grease lightning there, Jimmy. Probably would have been a better hands. analogy. <laughs> you like that one, grease lightning? Better than a fish. <laughs> the extra point is good. good. And that brings us to 21-7, 531 left to go here in this first half of play. The Walker Wildcats starting to take control of this one. Great crowd on hand. We'll be back right after this on the Cox 4 Game of the Week. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat everyone from blue chip athletes to blue collar workers, now with six locations to serve you. If your doctor recommends physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, the physical therapy choice of athletes, their fans, and everyone in between. <laughs> Lease the Jaguar X-Type for only $329 a month and enjoy more power than the BMW 325 and more standard amenities than the Audi A4. Drive the Jaguar X-Type and experience the only car in its class with permanent all-wheel drive, standard. Lease the Jaguar X-Type for only $329 a month. Visit Peretti Jaguar Baton Rouge today. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat everyone from soccer stars to soccer moms, now with six locations to serve you. If your doctor recommends physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, the physical therapy choice of athletes and their moms and everyone in between. Well, we told you we would have excitement, and so far we have not been proven wrong. As it has been uh, Hawkins, Chris Hawkins, all the way for the Walker Wildcats. Of course, Todrick Stevenson doing a great job as well, and Lockhart throwing some nice passes. The peak performance, physical therapy, scoring drive, Jeff Palermo. Seven plays, 62 yards, capped off by the long touchdown run. 38 yards by Chris Hawkins. Mears will kick it off. It's a little bit shorter than he has been kicking. It'll be taken by Turner. Turner takes it at the 15-yard line, and he is going to try to get around the right side, and he does so as he's got a good return, and they've got pretty darn good field position here as they take it at the 40-yard line. Well, Denham Springs is not out of this one. 524 left to go at it before half. Let's take a look again, though, at the Hawkins touchdown run. How many missed tackles on this one? We have one. Uh, there's two. It's, uh, uh, three. We'll give that one three. And then four, five, five of them. As he uh, busts in the end zone, I mean, 
Denham Springs, even though they're having a lot of missed tackles, Chris Hawkins has a lot to do with it. There's a timeout. Timeout. We will take it as well. No time. Well, a few seconds ticked off the clock here as 524 left to go in the first half. It's 21 to 7. The Walker Wildcats leading here at home on the Cox World Game of the Week. Towing and Recovery is the oldest towing company in the city of Baton Rouge. You know, Dennis, we've been chosen by the city of Baton Rouge as their preferred towing company for the last eight years. Roadrunner Towing and Recovery has over 15 units dispatched 24 hours a day. No job too large or too small. Roadrunner Towing and Recovery, the recovery specialist. Remember to call 356-3061. Boy, now there's a nice shot of the Walker Wildcat cheerleaders. Jimmy Frederick's fan club. <laughs> Did you know that Chris Hawkins played for the Renegades when he was a Pee Wee football player? Still doing pretty darn well, the Renegades are. Here's a handoff straight up the middle. And that was a pretty good run that time by the tailback. I believe that was Stewart. And uh, he picks up five. Well, even though Denham Springs is down by a couple touchdowns, they still not out of this. Still plenty of football to be played. But their defense is very close to making some stands. And offensively, they can get a drive going. They can get, you know, get a drive going, put some points on the board, put some more pressure on Coach Gayran and the Walker Wildcats. Coach Gayran always coaching, pacing those sidelines. Here we go, and a handoff this time to the fullback, Juno. And Juno is stacked up. He picks up a yard, maybe two on second effort, and he gets it to the 47-yard line. Oh, we've seen Walker convert on so many third downs here tonight. Let's see if Denham Springs is able to do it on third down and three. Ball will be on the far hash mark. I, I would imagine, Jimmy, they might uh, roll Benton Higgins out, even though he's got that sprained ankle. Let him roll out, give him a couple options here on the near side of the field and see if they can't convert this first down through the air. 413 left to go here in this third quarter, excuse me, in this uh, first half. And we see some substitutions coming and going on uh, for the Walker Wildcats. You got two receivers to the near side and a split eye backfield. A handoff oh, it's fumble. fumble, balls on the turf. It looks like the wild nope, did the Walker Wildcats get it? It's tough, Jimmy. A lot of bodies there. Walker uh, saying they got it. I think they got it. They don't even have to worry about punting it. The crowd's going to go wild. It looks like number 40 comes away with it. That's Billy Mattingly, the senior linebacker. And a, another turnover costly for the Yellow Jackets. The running back never had the football, Jimmy, and then he was hit once he got up to the line of scrimmage and had allowed the uh, fumble to occur. Walker able to pounce on it. Second turnover of the night for the Walker defense. They turn the ball over, very good field position here for the Walker Wildcats. And again, Hawkins, amazingly, still in the ball game, of course. You wouldn't expect anything less, as you have two receivers to the near side. Now, Hawkins is going to come in motion to the near side. That's the first time we've seen that. They set up the screen to Todrick. Todrick Stevens, and a good block by Hawkins. Stevens down the sideline, cuts back against the grain at the 20. He's got some room, still on his feet, spinning. And he's down to the 11-yard line. Great job for Hawkins to throw a block, but that was all Todrick Stevens, my friend. Somebody was hitting that B button. <laughs> Todrick Stevens just got down the sidelines after the Hawkins block, and it's a big pickup for the Walker offense as give him 35 yards on that play as he just had a chance to take a look at it, setting up first down and 10 at the 12-yard line. Excellent run, well-designed screenplay. This the handoff to Hawkins. Hawkins got a huge hole up the middle. He's going to be down to the three-yard line before being tackled by a host of Yellow Jackets, maybe a hive of Yellow Jackets. Hawkins already has three touchdown runs here tonight. Four is his season high. He had that against right. 
Arch Archbishop Hannon, whoever that is, uh, 251 <laughs> From New Orleans, man. <laughs> All right, 251 yards and four touchdowns. That was week two of the season. And then uh, week five, Jimmy, against Catholic, he had another big night of 250 yards on the ground. He's well on his way to that tonight. This is going to be Hawkins once again. This time he's going to be met at the two-yard line and driven back. Hawkins, those two nights you were talking about, was the 23rd best of the season for anyone and the 25th best rushing effort for anyone. Look at it here as Denham Springs able to bottle up Hawkins. There was a flag down on the play as well. Only the second flag for the whole night. So the dead ball, personal foul against Denham Springs, half the distance to the goal. That's going to be half the distance. The half the distance that also might give them a first down as well. So. As they get a shot of the uh, perch that we're up here, that's my <laughs> hand wave. Lamar, you're such a hog, man. <laughs> what? He ejected it. We're not sure who it was, but uh, we will check on that. We've got a great crew up here in the press box that are helping us out. We appreciate that, but uh, that had to have been a big one. You don't just get thrown out well, for anything. You know, if you're Denham Springs, and let's take a look at it again, is who might have possibly got in there. I don't know, it had to come away after the play, I would imagine. Difficult to tell. But they'll have the ball first and goal from the one. Can't see anything in that shot. A good shot by our camera guys on the field, but don't see the uh, personal foul that would have ejected someone. That was Aaron Rodriguez, by the way, who wrapped him up. He's in for the score. Touchdown. Chris Hawkins once again, his fourth of the night, fourth of the night, and it is now 27 to 7. Hawkins is having an amazing night, and, and he's coming off that little sprained ankle that he had to retake. Well, seems like he's been running better since then. <laughs> The offensive line, you got to give those guys an awful lot of credit. They're doing a phenomenal job as we see the Peretti point after almost blocked, but Mears puts it through for the fourth time. And it is 2.36 left to go here in this first half of play. 28 to 7, the Walker Wildcats with the three touchdown advantage. If you want an 04 before they're gone for good, there's no time like go time at Brian Harris Chevy. V8 Silverado Extended Cab LS loaded. Now just 18444. 18444. Get 13,000 off Suburban, 12,000 off Tahoe's. Go time for an 04 is now at Brian Harris Chevy, Florida, east of Flannery. At Energy, we use everything in our power to care for you. Every day, we seek, we search, we ask, we find, we care. Always exploring for new ways to power your life. Caring power. For service or information, call 1-800-ENTERGY. The power of people. Welcome back, everybody. Just two minutes, 36 seconds left in a very exciting first half of play. 28 to 7 is our score as the Walker Wildcats have really opened up a, a big advantage here as we go into the uh, last few minutes of this first half. There's Nolan Gill and his coaching staff. They uh, were awfully excited after that big fumble return for a touchdown. Now they've got to figure out some kind of way to stop Chris Hawkins. I would advise people at home not to change the channel. Thank you. Yes, because here on the Cox 4 game of the week, Jimmy, we've seen some one-sided <laughs> first halves, and the other team that was down in particular last week, the Estruba East of Sanchez game, where Estruba was down uh, 17 points and a half and ended up going double overtimes. Is, oh, how does that kid continue to kick the ball right at the uh, pylon? And I know, but then it was touched. Was it not? I don't know. I'm not exactly sure why. I happened. think it. Ball start. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see the flag. Okay, so he did end up kicking the ball out of bounds, but I thought Tasman Stewart had touched it, and it was going to be down at the one. Well, Denham Springs is going to get good field position out of this, but just to finish my thought, uh, don't change the dial, I guess is what right. I was trying right. to say. We've seen some remarkable second-half comebacks this season. 
Yeah, like you said, a lot of things come to mind. In that Donaldsonville Bruley game where Donaldsonville had run away with it, and no way in the world Bruley could come back and went down to the last 19 seconds. Here we go, first and 10 for the Yellow Jackets, the power eye formation. Now check that. It's a Two backs and a shotgun. Play action pass. Higgins is going to throw the ball out to Turner. Turner at the 40-yard line makes a man miss. He gets the first down at about 12 yards on the reception and a nice job for him. Nice job. Unfortunately, unable to get out of bounds, so that's going to keep the clock going. But nice pass completion. Bet Higgins hitting the sophomore Jeremy Turner as the uh, Yellow Jackets have quite a few sophomores on this offense that they count on to make plays for them. So. Well, they had to move the chain so it will stop the That's clock. That's right. You're right, Jimmy. You're right. About time I was able to correct you on something. <laughs> I'll four, give you one a season. Four receivers into the ball game. Out of the shotgun again. Doesn't even take a step. Fires over to Pusho. Pusho. Get out of bounds. Still on his get feet trying bounds. to get. No, and he does not get out of bounds that time, my friend. And he is going to be down into Wildcat territory, but only to the 44-yard line. And Pusho just 46. trying to make something happen, Jimmy. And fortunately, he, he wasn't able to get out of bounds, forcing the second down. So 149 is on the clock right now as Denham Springs trying to get some points on the board before halftime. Again, four receivers and a lone setback. It's going to be a low shotgun snap to Higgins, rolling out to his right, throws down fields, good spiral, looking for his intended receiver, number 26, Aaron Kusno, and it's incomplete. Brandon Brown, one of the defenders there for a walker. Good job by the Denham Springs offensive line. They gave Higgins plenty of time to throw this football and look for Casino down the field. And it brings up a third down and four. We've got 133, and of course the clock stops on the incompletion. I think we're in four down territory here too, but I would you might have to see say Walker so. just run a little draw play. Look, that's, what, that's what I'm gonna call it. They're gonna run a draw play to Tyler Judah. Possible. Just we'll have to wait first and see. Oh, bro. Not this time. <laughs> Good protection though, and tries to get it to his intended receiver. That was Turner and just outside of his reach, and it goes incomplete. It brings up fourth down now. It was a good play. I like that slant, though. That, that was a good pass play over to Tyler Juno, who has got a couple of catches on the season. Oh, I'm sorry, Turner, that was Jeremy. Actually. Jeremy, I was thinking they should have hand the ball off to Tyler Juno. But uh, thank him to get you in trouble. <laughs> Turner's still looking for his uh, first, actually he caught one earlier in the game, Jimmy. That might have been his first catch of the night. Not four down territory for Nolan Gill as they throw in uh, Manuel in there to punt it away. Now, do you, do you fake it by chance? I don't know. One uh, and a half minutes left to go here in this first half. But uh, he just doesn't want to give Walker excellent field position. Yeah. But let's see. Could see some trickery here. Well, and maybe you get, well, I don't know. You can't even ask for a hard count on this one. The ball will stop in that delay of game penalty, I would imagine, five yards back, and that pretty much uh, definitely puts him out of four down territory as it's back on the wrong side of the 50-yard line. They're not even going to call it. It was obvious. Again, this officiating crew doing a magnificent job led by Don Sanders, the referee. This is where now you... This is where you might want to think about a fake because it's a, a bit of a surprise. Nobody would think after the delay of game that you would fake it, but of course, they'll just put it away. Roland is going to be the one that's going to be receiving it. It's going to take a nice bounce right into his arms, and he is going to be sandwiched at the 12-yard line. So a nice little bounce into Roland's arms, but he goes nowhere as we had some pretty darn good coverage that time by the punt team. Case Gyro, one of the players down along with Cole Blackburn who gets yeah. in there as well to make sure that Walker is not able to get any kind of a return. And I would imagine Coach Gayron will just run a play or two and then go into the locker room with a three touchdown lead with 80 one. seconds to go. Yeah, 80 seconds left to go. Tell you, uh, looking at, at Blackburn, Blackburn looks a lot bigger than uh, 210. I don't know. <laughs> just my, maybe it's my imagination. Lockhart will bring the troops to the line of scrimmage, and he's going to hand off to guess who? Yes, Chris Hawkins. Chris Hawkins looked like he was stopped in the middle. He picks up 13 yards or 12 yards on the carry, and he's down to the 25-yard line. And you saw Hawkins as soon as he got the football, Jimmy, put two hands on it, make sure that he doesn't fumble the football. Had a fumble earlier in the game that resulted in Denham Springs' only touchdown of the night. Let's look at it. It's a very uh, cautious run at first by 
number 32 Hawkins. He's just got two hands on it. Then he sees a hole and he just hits another gear there. And a nice job by Denham Springs, number 12 there, able to finally bring him down. That was uh, Tim McGibbony to get him and make sure he doesn't go any further. There's a flag coming in toward the end of that play after the handoff. Let's wait for uh, uh, referee Don Sanders' call. Clock has stopped at 48 seconds. We have a five-yard incidental face mask against the defense, five-yard addition to the run. As you hear at the incidental five-yard face mask. Haven't seen too many penalties here tonight. It's been a really well played game. Unfortunately, we've had an ejection. But yeah. When you got two schools like this and a rivalry like this, sometimes things get heated, and especially with Walker trying to get their second ever victory over Denham Springs. They got their first one last year, and here they're in good shape to make it two in a row. Brings up a first and a yard here. And the power eye handoff to Hawkins. Hawkins is going to get the first down, but not by much. You know, this uh, Walker team, very, very experienced. They have 14 returning starters and a lot of seniors on the team, whereas Denham Springs, a very young team, a lot of juniors playing, a lot of sophomores. They have four sophomores starting on offense. So uh, they're doing a pretty good job. They're going to be something to reckon with in the next few years. But this game is far from over, my friend, as we have 19, 18 seconds in the clock ticking. This could just about do it for this first half of play. 12 seconds, and that will probably be the end of the first half. Six seconds. Three, two, and that'll do it. And Coach Garan is going to talk with Nikki Martin. And let's talk with uh, Coach John Garan. Let's throw it down to Nikki. Nikki? 28 points on the board. You have a considerable advantage at the half. How do you keep the momentum going? Well, you always play four quarters. You don't play one half of the ball game. That's one thing I got to remind the kids. In the second half, we don't want to get sloppy. You want to start giving them short fields. We want to do everything the same way we've been going. We, we're running the ball well. We're passing the ball well. Just want to keep it up. Man. We just don't want to get sloppy out there. Sometimes when you get a big lead, you tend to get a little bit sloppy in the uh, second half. And, and they still got two quarters to play, so it doesn't mean they can't come back. Well, we just got to make sure that we do what we're supposed to do in the second half. Well, good luck on the second half of the game. Back up to you, Jimmy. Thanks, Nikki. That was Coach John Garand getting ready to fire up his team and make sure that they don't forget they've got to play a full 48 minutes here. We are going to come back right after this for our halftime festivities. Don't go anywhere, folks. It's been an exciting first half, but we've got 24 minutes left to go as the Walker Wildcats lead the Yellow Jackets of Denham Springs 28 to 7 here at halftime. You're watching the Cox Ford Game of the Week. The Cox 4 Game of the Week is brought to you by ITI, Neighbors Federal Credit Union, Beretti Jaguar and Land Rover, Peak Performance, Red Stick Sports, and Sprint. Who's tired of paying $5 for a bag of peanuts? Who's tired of paying huge overage charges to your wireless company? But what if Sprint got rid of ugly overages? Check it out. With the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible Plan, 100 extra minutes never cost more than $10. Other plans charge at least $40, so talk all you want, or talk less and pay less. You uh, went over your barbecue minutes. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. This is one way to fix your body. Here's another, AAA Body and Paint. Family owned and operated, AAA has been the auto body and paint specialist taking care of Baton Rouge for more than 50 years. From the courteous people up front to the licensed pros in the shop, Bobby Lewis and staff's sole objective is customer satisfaction. AAA Body and Paint offers free pickup and delivery as well as free estimates. And AAA is the shop most recommended by insurance companies and local dealerships. We don't trust our body to anyone but AAA Body and Paint. AAA Body and Paint, your number one collision center. Teachers Credit Union has become Neighbors Federal, the credit union for everyone, because just being who you are should have its rewards. Come on and be the neighbors. Neighbors, it's where you belong. 
This is not merely an airplane. It is a powerful business tool. This is not simply a flight. It is your ticket to the world. This is not just a building. It is your personal business center. Your network of branch offices reaching into cities across the nation and around the world. If you do business in Baton Rouge, we mean business for you. Here, now, in Baton Rouge. Let's do business together at Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Protect your home furnishings with blinds from the blind man. Choose from a wide variety of materials and finishes. Accent your rooms with wood, aluminum, and cloth blinds in a rainbow of patterns, colors, and textures. Professional installation, free estimates, and exceptional customer service. Just three great reasons to call the blind man. Commercial or residential, we fit your needs. Relax. Let us do the work for you. Call the blind man today. Let's take a look at the Denham Springs Band. They are doing a magnificent job. We have seen a lot of halftime shows, Jeff Palermo, but nothing quite as fancy as these two guys are going to put on. No, okay, we're going to keep it here. We're going to look at some stats. A heck of a football game. I... We're going to have stats in the <laughs> halftime period is what I'm trying to get at. Let's throw it to the Denham Springs High School video. We really appreciate all the things that they have done. Uh, they helped us out immensely in this. And, of course, we like to highlight our schools tonight. And the visiting school, Denham Springs. Let's take a look. Denham Springs High School offers a well-rounded academic curriculum that affords opportunities for both students who wish to have college prep classes and also offers vocational technical training in cooperation with the local businesses in the Denham Springs community. A variety of extracurricular activities are available to help mold the character of students in order that they may become a productive citizen in today's society. State test scores are always in the upper 5% of the state. Denham Springs High School, a school of excellence. Boy, I have to take a look at that tape. That was uh, unfortunately my fault, I believe, but we will get that back fixed up. But again, let's take a listen and a look at the sights and sounds of the Denham Springs High School Band. We'll be back right after this. dollars for a bag of peanuts. Yeah. You're tired of paying huge overage charges to your wireless company. Yeah. But what if Sprint got rid of ugly overages? Yeah. Check it out. With the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible plan, 100 extra minutes never cost more than $10. Other plans charge at least 40 so talk all you want. Or talk less and pay less. You uh, went over your barbecue minutes. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. toss the dough fresh every day and you can taste the difference our whole peeled plum tomatoes and imported cheeses make well, you can't beat D'Angelo's pizzeria the highest quality salads appetizers calzones pasta dishes pizza and that exceptional D'Angelo's team service prove that we're more than just great pizza well, you can't beat D'Angelo's 
going to taste the difference. Tired of searching all over for great pool supplies? Where are the pool supplies? Lady, do I look like a pool man to you? Then you got to come visit the brand new, newly remodeled Pool and Spa World. Same low prices, friendly service, and free water analysis. But when you're shopping for an in-ground pool, spa, or just need chemicals or a filter, then Pool and Spa World is the place for you. Come and see us at Pool and Spa World, where you can always take a dip without getting soaked. Hey sports fans, it's football time again, and as always, we're having a big sale here at Blue Ribbon Motors. That's sure to score points for the whole family. Now here's the lineup. At Blue Ribbon Motors, we have a great selection of cars, trucks, and sport utilities. With low prices, low notes, and easy financing, it's hard to beat us at Blue Ribbon Motors, the home of zero down. seeing a wonderful halftime show by the Denham Springs High School marching band. It is 28 to 7. The Walker Wildcats leading and Jeff Palermo. It's been a wild first half of play. Two turnovers very costly for the Denham Springs uh, Yellow Jackets, but also a turnover for, for the big Wildcats. And that uh, turnover by the Wildcats has allowed Denham Springs to score their only touchdown of the football game, a 70-yard fumble return for a touchdown for Keith Hickman after Chris Hawkins fumbled it. But in the second quarter, Jimmy, all Walker as they score 21 points. And Chris Hawkins has had a huge time here tonight, four touchdown runs. And the Walker offense has rushed for what, close to 200 yards? Well, let's take a look at the stats right half. now. And look at the uh, different differences in uh, quite a few of the uh, statistics here. First downs, Walker's got you know a huge advantage there. Both teams don't really throw the football much, so you don't see a big differential there. But the rushing yards, 214 to Denham Springs, 14. The two turnovers by Denham Springs. And then uh, we haven't seen too many penalties here, Jimmy, but it has just been a uh, dominant performance so far here by the Walker Wildcats. All right, here's what we've got going now. We are at halftime. We're getting ready to see our Cox 4 kick of the week. It is going to be Craig McCulloch, I believe, is going to be doing the honors tonight. A 25-yard field goal. He is set up. He's, uh, again, all you have to do is come to Cox a Cox Ford game of the week. Here it is. The kick is up. He's is it, it in? Is he got it? Does he have it? Is it good? <laughs> oh, it's good. I'm waiting for somebody to make a signal here. Come on. <laughs> the prime industrial shot of the night is Craig McCullough winning himself a year's worth of free service. Cox cable, Cox digital cable, and Cox high-speed internet. And congratulations to that young man right there as he comes away with the big victory tonight for the 25-yard field goal kick for service. We're going to see, uh, well, now they're going to have the Walker Wildcats come on and, ta and do their halftime show. And let's see if we can go down to Nikki Martin. There's Nikki Martin right there. Let's hey, talk. Craig, you have a pretty strong leg. Did you play high school football? I played, but not kicker, as you can tell. Oh, no, you did great. Back up to you, Jimmy. Congratulations, Craig McCullough. We appreciate your effort. And uh, nice job right there. Craig McCullough wins the Cox 4 kick of the week. He gets a free Cox cable, free digital cable, and free high-speed internet for an entire year, an $1,800 value. Again, all you have to do is come to a Cox 4 game of the week, and you just may be kicking for free service. We're going to listen a little bit here to the Walker Wildcat marching band, and then we'll head to a break and get ready for this third quarter of play. Don't go anywhere, folks. The Walker Wildcats leading 28 to 7 over the Denham Springs Yellow Jackets.
watching a magnificent halftime show by the Walker High School Marching Band and the Flag Corps. Now it's time to take a look at Walker High School. They have been so generous in their hospitality, getting us this football game and helping us throughout. And now let's take a look at Walker High School. Public education in Walker, Louisiana began in 1875. As a forerunner in school improvement, Walker High began evaluating the effectiveness of its programs. New courses to enhance the curriculum were added in 1995 with the implementation of the 4x4 block schedule. The No Child Left Behind legislation prompted Walker High to develop a student-first initiative. The mission of Walker High School is to develop lifelong learners by providing learning opportunities that meet the academic, emotional, and social needs of all students in a safe environment. And we're back, everybody. We're at halftime, and it has been a magnificent halftime show by both of the two marching bands, first for Denham Springs, and then here we're watching the Walker High School marching band and the flag corps. 28 to 7 is our score, Jeff Palermo. The Walker Wildcats have come on strong, of course, a very incredi an incredible effort by just who we would expect it to be is Chris Hawkins, and he has done a magnificent job running the football four touchdowns. We've got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line. We have yeah. not talked a lot about them yet, and they really have opened up some big holes. All of them seniors, all of them, uh, you know, good size, and a, as you mentioned, Jimmy, just giving Chris Hawkins a little room to work with, and he's been able to break some long runs here tonight, and the four touchdown runs, and all of them have been highlight films to, to see this kid run. It's uh, it's quite a treat for us up here in the press box. Without question, well, we expect to see a lot more of him as we head to the second half. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're getting ready to start the third quarter. We'll be back right after this. The Walker Wildcats leading 28-7 to on the Cox 4 Game of the Week. The Cox 4 Game of the Week is brought to you by Audubon Ford, Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport, the Baton Rouge General Health System, Coca-Cola, Dreamland Barbecue, and energy. Let's say there's a problem with your satellite TV. Who would you call? The clerk at the store? That lady who activated the service? Or maybe the neighbor who helped install it? Confusing, huh? It's just another reason why I'm sticking with Cox. With Cox, getting great service is easy. One call and help is there. We're talking real experts with real answers and right in my neighborhood, too. Don't get stuck with satellite. When you have an injury, you need to get back to work or life fast. When you're hurt, you have a choice. So why not choose the best? Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. At Peak Performance, we'll get you back on the job or with your life fast. Stronger and better than ever. Stronger, faster, better. Remember, when you have an injury, you do have a choice. So ask your doctor for the best. Ask for Peak Performance Physical Therapy. There's a location near you, and the results can last a lifetime. It's a golfer's oasis nestled in a wonderful community built for all people and all needs. It's Copper Mill Golf Club, just minutes from downtown Baton Rouge. A championship caliber course, Copper Mill offers 18 holes of link style golf on a public course. We host tournaments and corporate outings, or just you and a friend. Copper Mill Golf Club offers a full-service golf shop and practice facilities with professional help at your service. After you've played at Copper Mill, you'll know it's a wonderful life. I hadn't seen him in a while. I wasn't sure if he'd recognize me. So I jogged his memory. Again. And again. That's the end of the career, I think, right there. Girls start punking you. Uh, maybe you could get a number or something. Yeah, at least get a date on Please. it or something. <laughs> I still don't know if he knows my name. But I'm pretty sure I left an impression. Just about ready to start the third quarter. There's a shot from our prime industrial shot, our prime industrial man lift. Remember, if you need anything at all, they've got it all over at prime industrial. They've got plenty of locations for you, so go by and see them. And that's a great shot of the gold helmets of the lit yellow jackets. Coach Nolan Gill has got to get these guys fired back up. Let's take a look. Let's talk with Coach Nolan Gill with Nikki Martin. Nikki. Coach, what? Adjustments are you making to to combat this running game and get some points on the board in the second half? Well, we feel like there's some things that they're giving us. We just got to get out there and we got to move the football. 
I mean, we've got a good little offensive scheme here, but we need some possessions here. You know, you can't give them a short field like that. they got some good athletes, and, and defensively, we need to step it up and make some plays. Well, good luck to you on the second half, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Back up to you, Jimmy. Thank you. That was head coach Nolan Gill of the Yellow Jackets. You can tell. you still got some pep in the step, and he's ready to get out there and get this football going again, football game going again. Let's take a look again at the stats, Jeff Palermo, and uh, you can see a very – Disparage, not disparaging, but, a, but an incredible one-sided. There you go, the word I'm looking for. Thanks for saving me, Wheel. Let's talk about it. 254 tilde yards for Walker. Most of them from the legs of Chris Hawkins as uh, Walker's just dominated this first half. If it wasn't for the long turnover or long fumble return for a touchdown for Denham Springs, that 70-yard touchdown run, uh, you know, this game would be uh, a lot worse than it is. But Walker's going to get the football back, and let's see if uh, Denham Springs can force him three and out. Let's see if we can take a look at the uh, Denham Springs video again. We apologize for the glitch in the tape. Hopefully we've gotten that corrected. I believe it could have been a problem with us. Let's take a look at it. Denham Springs High School offers a well-rounded academic curriculum that affords opportunities for both students who wish to have college prep classes and also offers vocational technical training in cooperation with the local businesses in the Denham Springs community. A variety of extracurricular activities are available to help mold the character of students in order that they may become a productive citizen in today's society. State test scores well, we are always in the upper again, 5 percent uh, of the state. A little problem with the dub that I believe I made, as a matter of fact. We'll have to fix that. Well, we'll unfortunate get, because Denham Springs is an incredible high school. We'll fix it. I promise. Just give you a turnover for that or something. No. <laughs> just as long as you don't get, I don't get fired. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's start this third quarter back up. We've had an exciting halftime with two different shows from the Denham Springs Marching Band and also from the Walker Marching Band. And now it's time for the football team to get back out there to action. 28 to 7 is the score. The Walker Wildcats with a commanding lead, but as we know, Jeff Palermo, you never want to take your eye off the Cox Four game of the week. And it will be a good end over end kick and taken by Todrick. Todrick Stevenson at the five yard line. He's got a little bit of a hole and he's got a nice return going as he lets some of the blockers get ahead of him and he's got a, about a 40 yard return to the 49 yard line. Well, the biggest problem tonight for Denham Springs is the missed tackles and you'll see it here quite a few times on the sprint instant replay. And there goes Todrick Stevens just running up the gut. Look at how many Denham Springs players seem to be going for the football here a right. little bit. Trying to, instead of tackling the ball carrier, trying to tackle the football, trying to force a fumble. Well, that allows Todrick Stevenson to return it all the way almost to the midfield mark. So it's first and 10 from the 49-yard line of the Walker Wildcats, and that's going to be an encroachment penalty. That was a quick one. That'll be a five-yard gift. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense, five-yard penalty, we play first down. Yeah, no question about that one, Jeff. Well, we only saw four penalties in the first half, and right off the bat, the first offensive play of the second half can't get off in time or can't, can't, can't be snapped because of the five-yard penalty. And just giving Walker, you know, free yardage when they've been doing a good Good job by themselves getting yards on their own. Another great hole up the middle and turning the corner is, is Hawkins, and Hawkins has got 15 yards on the carry and a nice seal block on that left side of the line. Magnificent job as you saw number 44 of the tight end go in motion and set up a nice block there. Coach Gay ran and company, they overload the right side of the offensive line and he did pick up a nice block by the fullback for Walker, number 44. Kirby McGregor actually was a tight end came in and kind of sealed it off and allowed Hawkins to get to the outside. Well, brings up another first down as that will be the 14th first down, I believe, of the game so far for Walker. Here comes that screen pass that worked so well earlier. This time it's not going to be as effective as it's sniffed out very quickly by number 20 Hickman and company. Yeah, also there defensively for Denham Springs, number 77, Dustin Smith is Stevenson, instead of running it to the outside like he did in the second quarter that resulted in a 
45 yard pass play, ran it towards the inside and there were a ton of white jerseys there to make the stop. Second down and long now for Walker. Plays up second and eight, the ball resting at the 45 yard line or just outside the 45 yard line. And there's a fumble, they fumbled the snap. Let's see, I think Walker fell back on and Lockhart I was, able, I was able to get back on it very quickly, but uh, that's a, a turnover that could be very costly to the Wildcats. Well, Coach Gayran is praying for a mistake like that not to happen because you don't want to give Devin Springs any feeling that they're in this football game. You almost have a feeling Jimmy if Walker goes down there and scores again, that it's going to take a lot of air out of Devin Springs' balloon. I say that every week, man, and it's a big comeback at the end. <laughs> We'll see if they can do that again. Here we go, it's gonna be a five-step drop. And a nice catch by Todrick Stevenson. Another missed tackle, two missed tackles. Touchdown, Todrick Stevenson. Oh my goodness, make the tackle, guys. Two big missed tackles allows Todrick Stevenson to go into the end zone for another score. 39-yard pass play is Todrick Stevenson finding the end zone for the first time. Touchdown pass by Michael Lockhart, a five-step drop, quickly fires it out to the sidelines. And you mentioned it, Jimmy, here's a chance to wrap up. And the Denham Spring defender, Tim McGibbony, was not able to do it. Justin Wax then had a chance at him. But instead, it's six points for Walker. The Peretti point after is up. And that will be the fifth extra point made by Mears. And it didn't take much time. Two minutes tick off the clock here in the third quarter, 35 to 7. As we head to this break, we'll be back right after this on the Cox 4 Game of the Week. These days, my garden is my therapy. There's always something new in bloom. Taking care of my husband has been a full-time job. When he broke his hip, I stayed in the hospital with him the entire time. Now, some places might treat you like a pest, but the people at Baton Rouge General just took me under their wing. I'd go down to the kitchen at night and they'd say, are you getting enough to eat? They treated us like part of the family. Pat O'Pier, Baton Rouge. Who's tired of paying $5 for a bag of peanuts? Who's tired of paying huge overage charges to your wireless company? Yeah. What if Sprint got rid of ugly overages? Yeah. Check it out. With the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible plan, 100 extra minutes never cost more than $10. Other plans charge at least $40, so talk all you want, or talk less and pay less. You uh, went over your barbecue minutes. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. Welcome back to Walker High School as we'll look at the sprint instant replay as Hawkins used as a decoy on this play. Fakes like he's taking a pitch. A good block he saw by Wren and then a the nice pass by Lockhart. And then Todrick Stevenson does the rest. A couple of missed tackles and Walker Jimmy up big right now. 35 to 7 as Denham Springs will get the ball for the first time here in the second half. You, you can't tackle these running backs high they've tried to do several times here tonight and you see them they just brush them off like like uh, you know they just brush them off like tacklers are not going to be made this kick is going to go out of bounds and that'll be a procedure call and they'll get it at the 35 yard line peak performance physical therapy scoring drive summary three plays 51 yards and the 37 yard touchdown pass to Stevenson and Walker offensively Jimmy really can that can do no wrong and their fans have had a lot to cheer about here tonight even Darth Vader is a little excited if we no, we don't got a shot at Darth Vader anytime. Hey, Darth maybe take off the cape. <laughs> you know, this is uh, the first five, four, five, eight victory that Walker had last year. Yeah. If they're able to hang on here tonight, it'll be the first four, five, eight victory they will have this year. And that could set them up for a run into the playoffs. But they have to run the table after this. Here comes a pass from Higgins. Higgins throws a little bit behind his intended receiver. That was Pucho, and Pucho just can't quite hang on to it. And there you see a great crowd at the home of the Wildcats. Well, the next two games for Walker are both winnable. They go to Central. They take on Central, who has yet to win this season. And then they got Woodlawn, who we've seen a couple times yeah, this year. And Woodlawn, I mean, that's going to be an explosive game. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of points in that game because we know Woodlawn, they can score quite a bit. He's They're Walker playing a lot team. better football. Yeah, I mean, that game against Sadamaw last week, they gave the Gators everything they wanted and more. 
Here we go, a two-step drop out of the shotgun. This time he finds his receiver, but he is going to wow. be met immediately when he makes the catch. Good job for him to hang on to the football. That was Pucho. Todrick Stevenson, the cornerback on that side, puts a lick on Pucho, and he picks up about five. Good Rusty there hanging out with the uh, Walker faithful. Doing a nice job. Yes, he is. We have a great crew out, as we always do. Rusty Alford. Well, there's us right there, you see. There's Jimmy. Uh, you know, just kind of pushing me out of the way. I can't well, watch you know, the game. Here we go. We're Back at. to action. <laughs> and stepping up into the pocket is Higgins. Higgins is looking for some running room. Turns the corner, and it's a foot race to the sideline. He gets the first down. Oh, he oh. slips down, and that was unintentional. No, he slipped on the, uh, just on the, the concrete, concrete there. The track. A nice run by Benton Higgins where he looked downfield, couldn't find anybody open, took off with it for Denham Springs, their third first down here in the uh, football game. And right now at this point, Jimmy, they, they just need to sustain a drive, uh, maybe put some points on the board, and I think more importantly, keep their defense off the field for a while. Four receivers into the into the ball game, and Higgins is going to swing it out to Tasman Stewart. Stewart trying to make some uh, make some hay on the flats. And you know that's one thing that you talked about last week is the fact that they needed to get their big receivers in last week into the game plan. Now you have to get Tasman Stewart yeah. into the game as well. Tasman Stewart is their playmaker. He's got four touchdowns on the season. Ten catches coming into this football game, and we barely mentioned his, his name in the first half. And, Good point. I mean, last week, Estruma kind of forgot about Jamora Stewart, and then they got hit the ball in the second half, and they were able to rally and force the game into overtime. Here's a little quarterback draw that goes nowhere. A good job, a shoestring tackle from behind. Good pursuit that time, and he picks up a yard at most. And when we had a chance to speak with Coach Gayron of Walker right before halftime, and Coach Gayron told us, hey, Denham Springs has got some playmakers on that side, and they can come into the second half and put some touchdowns on the board really quick and get back into the football game. So he just wants his team to continue playing at that intensity, that level of intensity that they played with in the first half. Again, out of the shotgun is Benton Higgins. He has gone the distance so far at quarterback, and he will fire over to his receiver. And the catch is made. That's Pucho again. Just enough for the first down. Nice job to go just far enough and make the catch. How often do you see a receiver not quite get that far and not get the first down? Ben Higgins, though, rifled that ball into Pucho, who made the nice catch there on the far side of the field. And for Denham Springs, they get back-to-back -back first downs here, moving the chains a little bit. Well, that was one of your keys, control the football. And right now they're doing that here in the third quarter. 7.28 left to go here in the third. As we see the Yellow Jackets driving. Now rolling to his left is Benton Higgins. Higgins trying to get it to Turner, and Turner has to lay out, and he gives a little slap to the cornerback on that side. Good job that time for uh, the cornerback, number 27, Jacob Breeden. And Jacob Breeden is all over the intended wide receiver, Jeremy Turner. And again, a nice throw football by Higgins is just a little bit too far for Turner to get good coverage on the play and also good protection there. Mm -hmm. You know, Denham Springs offensive line, they, they haven't been able to open too many holes for the running game, but they have kept defenders away from the quarterback, Benton Higgins, tonight. Three juniors, a sophomore, and a senior on that front seven, front six. Here we go, it's going to be Benton Higgins switching arms, and he's got some running room close to the first down as he crosses the 30-yard line to the 27. Nice play calling by head coach Nolan Gill on the quarterback draw as Higgins faked the pass and then tucked it in and get, getting some nice blocking downfield as well. Chet Henderson, you saw, blocking to open up things for Denham Springs, who now have three first downs on this drive, Jimmy. And they will bring the uh, Yellow Jackets come back to the line of scrimmage again. Working from the shotgun is Benton. Need to mention the offensive coordinators. There's two of them for the Denham Springs Yellow Jackets. And there was a throw just a little bit high. And the receiver got nailed. And that was number 26, Cousineau, Aaron Cousineau, the, uh, the offensive coordinator for Denham Springs, Robbie Mafus and Mike Todd. They're doing a great job out there. And 
Higgins again had time to throw right. that football and it allowed Casino to run his route. And the pass just a little bit beyond him as you take a look at a couple of Walker players. There's Chris Hawkins on the right side of the screen, the high socks. You like that fashion statement, Jim? Thinking about getting myself in some <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> To go fishing in your boat. There you go. Here comes the next pass by Higgins. Higgins finds his receiver. That's Cusano, I believe. No, it's Pusho. Excuse me. Pusho making the grab and picks up five more. Corey Jackson on the stop, a junior for the Walker Wildcats. And we're seeing Bet Higgins moving to Denham Springs down the field here. Look at him surveying the uh, defense and then finally finds his wide receiver. And I like the I like his arm. I mean he doesn't he can't throw the deep ball too well, but until he puts some zip on it. As I mentioned, a nice job by the Walker defender, Corey Jackson. I tell you, the one big difference in this game is Walker's ability to tackle and yeah. Denham Springs' inability to make tackles. Third down and six, and it will be a quarterback draw, and Benton Higgins has got a little bit of an opening, but he's going to be stopped shy of the first down at the 21-yard line. Another good tackle that time by the Walker defense. Michael Stevenson laid the hit on Benton Higgins. Nice job by the Yellow Jacket offensive line on the right side to open up a bit of a hole, and then you see Stevenson laying the lumber. It's going to bring up, though, a fourth down for Denham Springs. Fourth and three, no question, four down territory with 5.35 left to go in the third quarter in a 35-7 to football game with the Wildcats leading the Yellow Jackets. The Yellow Jackets trying to get it back into the promised land in the end zone, and they have done it all through the air so far, and there is a big lick on Higgins. Higgins never saw him coming, and what a shot that was by Stevenson. Stevenson again, he's not a big guy as you see him. 5'7", 160 pounds, but Higgins never feels the pressure from the backside, and it actually ended up hitting one of his offensive linemen that passed it, and it was deflected away, and Denham Springs turns it over on downs. That's the first time that Higgins has been really pressured in the backfield. His offensive line has done a magnificent job of giving him some time, and that time allowed, uh, I want to say it was the one of the linebackers, it was the linebacker Michael Stevenson coming in unabated. And boy, he really put a lick on, uh, on Higgins that time. So as you said, they turned the ball over on downs, a tight formation and a handoff to Hawkins once again. This time Hawkins goes nowhere. And that's jo uh, Jacob Kersey, the guy we expected to call his name an awful lot tonight, and he's been very effective at linebacker. Senior linebacker for the Yellow Jackets at six foot one, 220 pounds, busting through the line of scrimmage and tackling Hawkins. And Hawkins was still, actually Hawkins ends up losing two yards, and we haven't seen too many times tonight that Walker runs a play for negative yardage. Just under five minutes to play in the third quarter. The Walker Wildcats back to the line of scrimmage. A receiver in Todrick Stevenson to the far side of your screen and you see McGregor go in motion and when McGregor goes in motion you can expect to run to that side and Hawkins is nailed by Chase Jaro, number 94, the big man up front. And uh, the big senior makes a great tackle, still picks up about, well, not much, maybe a yard, actually. Denham Springs defense is looking really good on this drive. That time they did not allow Chris Hawkins to turn the corner. We've seen Hawkins turn the corner, and they, he'll break it for a first down, but it was good job by the defensive end, Jairo, to make sure he wasn't able to get around him, and that sets up the big third down and 11, and Denham Springs might be able to get their hands on the football back here quickly. If I'm not mistaken, this is the longest third down play that Walker has had all night long. Here comes the quick pitch over to Hawkins. Hawkins is going to be wrapped up well short of the first down. you got to give a big high five to that Yellow Jacket defense. Oh, that was an excellent job. Justin Wax coming up on his free safety as we'll have a isolation here on Chris Hawkins, and you'll see Yellow Jack free safety Justin Wax come in and make a hit, and there's quite a few gold helmets there. Daniel Smith, another guy in on that stop, along with Keith Hickman, and so three plays and out. I think that's the first time all night Jimmy Walker's gone three and out. Blake Cassells will do the honors of putting it for the first time tonight. And he will kick off, he will kick it from his 10-yard line, drifting back to make the catch and letting it roll, actually. And he is going to, well, dance with the devil, but he gets out of the way. And that was Turner, and it'll roll down to the 25-yard line. Boy, he got awfully close to that one again, Jeff. We've seen that an awful lot this year. Still scares me every time I see it. 
Let's take a look at what's going on Wednesday nights on Cox 4. You don't want to miss the primetime lineup. Enjoy music from today's hottest musicians with music choice at 8 o'clock. Keep up with R&B and hip-hop with a local twist. Jeff Blair, my favorite show, Fat Fat and All That at 9. And check out pay-per-view movie previews with the movie vlog at 10.30. The, Jeff, uh, the best local programming is only on cable only on Cox 4. A lot of local programming on Cox 4. We're so glad that you've joined us for this local program. Walker Wildcats and the Yellow Jackets of Denham Springs. It's Higgins drifting back. He's got plenty of time to throw it across the middle. He finds his receiver. That's Cousineau. And Cousineau will get it across the 40-yard line and picks up a big 7, 16 yards on the stone on the reception. And again, Ben Higgins, plenty of time. And you got to give some credit to the Yellow Jack wide receivers. As Walker is, you know, they're only rushing four guys and so they got plenty of guys maximum protection as far as you know playing that prevent defense but right. still the Denham Spring wide receivers are able to get open in Casino wide open over the middle of the field and Denham Springs gets another first down here in the second half. Ball rests at the 46 yard line into Yellow Jacket territory again the shotgun formation and now they've got a jailbreak and Kendall Rodriguez was putting the hit on Higgins as soon as he threw the football, and that is the big defensive end that we knew may run wild here. Pass intended for Poucher, and there is a penalty flag. I, no, there is no penalty flag. Watch this hit if we can get it. Watch him coming through, and he just does the swim move past one of the offensive linemen. This is Roderick's first game since bruising a knee against Sanibo, and he drills the quarterback, Higgins. And Roderick is a big dude at 6'2", 243 pounds. Senior two, expect him to be playing somewhere next year. Possibly Northwestern or uh, ULM, somewhere like that, one of the state schools. Again, trying to fight through a couple of blocks. And this one's up for grabs, and it is going to be knocked away by Todrick Stevenson. Stevenson was kind of hoping he was going to make that catch. Jeremy Turner, the intended wide receiver for Higgins, and he just gets too much air on this football. Look at this lollipop, lollipop as he got it way up in the air. Were you and, singing? Yeah, I was. <laughs> as Todrick Stevenson gets in there and knocks it away. But, uh, you know, we've waved a bit about Higgins' arm, but that time just gets too much air in it, and that allows Walker defensively to swat that football away. The left side of that offensive line had to double team to make sure that Roderick didn't get through. Now Roderick's going to drop back into coverage oh. and across the middle as Cousin, uh, Cus Casino, Casino uh, makes the stop. Miller listening to the yellow uh, jacket uh, coaches next to us. Uh, hoping that his wide receivers can catch the pass and ball batted up in the air. And that's how we saw the interception earlier in the football, football game by Chris Hawkins, the first turnover, the pass deflected off a yellow jack, jacket wide receiver's hands. That led to the first turnover of the night. Now, yellow jackets will have to punt. Manuel will do another awesome job of punting the football. It will be taken by Roland. Roland will fair catch it at the 10 yard line and that's where the Wildcats will take over. Let's take a look at what's on Thursday night. Of course, there's so much great programming on Cox 4. You definitely don't want to miss the primetime lineup on Thursday nights, especially if you're a sportsman. But first, you need to take a look at uh, the current and best in local theater on Artworks at 6.30. Meet Louisiana artists on Delta Hands at 7. And then you go outdoors with the best. Sportsman's Paradise at 8. Paradise, Louisiana at 9 o'clock. And of course, that one's produced by Frank Hilliard, our very own engineer. As we get back to this football game, the best local programming only on cable, only on Cox 4. There's another big hole for Hawkins as Hawkins gets to the 15-yard line. A five-yard pickup. Man, he's getting five yards every time, if not more. But we're starting to see the Denham Springs linebackers come up and make some hits. Keith Hickman was there on that stop and looking at Matt Hill of yeah. Walker, the nose guard for the Wildcats. He's had a good night tonight as this whole Walker team has up 35 to seven and looking for their second consecutive win over Denham Springs. And the second consecutive win in this uh, season. They won last night, last week against Riverdale, and this is going to be the sophomore fullback, Wren. And Wren, excuse me, drags the pile a bit and picks up three. 
If this score holds for Denham Springs, their record would fall to one and seven. Their fourth straight loss, Jimmy, and in the last three games coming into tonight, they've only scored 17 points yeah. here. They've yet to put up an offensive touchdown here tonight. The rest of the schedule shakes out like this for the L Jackets. They got Baker next week. That's a non-district game as Baker is a, a 4A team, and then they take on Central. So Denham Springs still has an opportunity to finish off the season There's on a good news, on a good note, as you look at Kendall Roderick. He's been laying some hits tonight. Yes, he has. There's another handoff up the middle. This time to Wren once again, and Wren goes nowhere. I don't think he's going to be getting the first down, Jeffrey. I think second he's going time, to be short. Yeah, second time tonight, or second time in a row. Jim yeah. Walker's gone three and out offensively, and I think uh, because of the big lead here, Jimmy, some of the intensity has uh, been lost in this football game. Is <laughs> sounded like. You saw one of the uh, Walker offensive linemen, Justin West, saying, hey, it's only a couple inches, Coach. We can get it. <laughs> well, that's probably just about going to do it for this third quarter. We have eight seconds to go, and I think they may try to get it off. Let's see. They're lined up like they are, but we only got three seconds, and that will do it for the third quarter. So a touchdown in the third quarter gives the Walker Wildcats a 35-7 to lead as we head to the final 12 minutes. Don't go anywhere, folks. We've got 12 more minutes of high school football action here on the Cox 4 Game of the Week. The summer was going pretty good, except for being totally broke. Paul had the idea that maybe we should get jobs. The only other guy he could convince to go with him was Kyle, so they went and interviewed. Thought they were going to have to wear ties every day. Turned out worse. They said the bright side was that there were plenty of places to skate behind the store. Made the workday go by a little faster. The problem was they spent more time skating than working. They decided that just wasn't fair to their boss, so they broke the news. He was crushed, of course. Now they're back, ditched those uniforms, came out of the whole thing with a couple paychecks and a newfound respect for the working man. When you have a sports injury, you need to get back in the game fast. When you're hurt, you have a choice, so why not choose the best? Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy, and Peak Performance will get you back on the field fast, stronger and better than ever. Stronger, faster, better. Remember, when you have an injury, you do have a choice. So ask your doctor for the best. Ask for Peak Performance Physical Therapy. There's a location near you, and the results can last a lifetime. It's time for the fourth quarter, and it will be Cassell's putting it away. While we have one second, I want to mention the Fellowship of Christian Athletes' big fall banquet. It's going to be held at the Riverside Central Plex. Brian Kinchin is going to be uh, the keynote speaker, and you can get all the information if you'd like to attend by calling 769-7137. 769-7137, the FCA banquet. And there's a big punt by Cassell's. Drifting back is Turner. Turner takes it at the 40-yard line, and... He called a fair catch, and he will stay right there. They hit Cassells on that punt, but the referee did not throw. Really? Play. Yeah, they uh, turned away myself. And I don't know, maybe Cassells was acting a little bit, looking for an Oscar, but uh, <laughs> he comes away with... I'll be making some nominations pretty soon. <laughs> All right, let's see if Denham Springs can score here and, and put together a good fourth quarter and try to salvage this game some way. They have been able to move the football here a little bit in the second half, led by their quarterback, Benton Higgins, and let's see if they'll be able to keep it up here in the fourth Again, quarter. Higgins looks to his right, then oh. back to his left, and just dropped the pass was Tasman uh, Stewart, and it was right in the bread basket. That one should have been caught. He looked for some daylight instead of watching the ball in. Yeah, and we've got one of, the, uh, one of the guys down. Looks like rolling down for... The Walker Wildcats, and maybe just our, a cramp. Yeah, we got our first cramp muscle. Well, it's hot as heck out there. It feels like a jamboree. <laughs> it does. It does. We, uh, when I got here to the ball game, Jimmy, uh, seeing all the uh, crew sweating to the oldies, <laughs> getting ready. And uh, oh, by the way, uh, coming here to uh, Walker, uh, you know, what a place to watch a football game. Oh, what an environment to, to watch the Oh, game it really is have. nice. You drive up and you think you're at Tiger Stadium for a second with all the grilling going on outside and tailgate the whole deal. Yeah, this is quite an atmosphere here out in Livingston Parish and for Walker to get this victory to get four and four on the season and a chance to run the table from here on out as you look at some of the young ones that are here in this game. 
You know, this has been a long, long rivalry for these two teams. They've played 26 times over the years, starting in 1959. And it's been all Denham Springs until last year when Walker won 10 to 7. And then here they are with a big, big lead here going into the uh, into the fourth quarter, 35 to 7. But this is a storied rivalry. You know, we've got some great games coming up in the last two or last three regular season games. Next week we're at St. James and Lutcher. There's a huge rivalry. And then you've got the West Bank rivalry tussle. with the West Bank <laughs> tussle. I had a name for it. I have to remember it. I mean, this is another pass by Higgins. Higgins finds his receiver. Did he make the catch? And I believe he did. And that was a nice catch by Pusho. Jimmy, I think you termed that game the whipping on the West Bank. Whipping on the West Bank. That's <laughs> it right there. It's uh, Port Allen and Bruley coming up in our final regular season game. But then we go into the playoffs. We go all the way up to the semifinals. Assuming that local teams are uh, going that far. And I have a feeling we're going to see some local teams going that far. We might see this Walker team get in the playoffs as well, which is what they are uh, desperately hoping for. It's been a while for the Wildcats in the playoffs. They run the table there in the playoffs. And there's another good hit by Stevenson, but a great catch by Pusho once again. And uh, we're looking to get to see uh, Northeast and maybe a little Parkview. Redemptors, who knows who will be getting in the playoffs, but it's going to be good football no matter what. Walker, they moved the chains there, buddy. Walker came into this game three and four, likely to get their fourth win of the season, but they've had a couple of tough losses. They lost to Catholic in week five, a, a field goal the Bears mm -hmm. hit with 14 seconds left, beat the Wildcats. And then the season opener against Mandeville, they had a chance to get a win there, but the skippers, as they call them down there in Mandeville, get the victory over Walker, 19 to 18. Benton Higgins again, this time overthrowing his intended receiver. This is a new receiver that we have not seen yet tonight, and that's Grant Farlow, only a junior. That time just passed, just uh, sailed a bit on, on the young Higgins. Higgins is a senior. He's done a good job the last couple of years, but uh, expect we may see Pusho in the next year or two. Yeah, Pusho only a junior. junior. He was the quarterback when Higgins was out with an injury. Pusho is thrown for 88 yards this season, completed 13 passes. Higgins is not a bad quarterback either. And again, Benton this time the option, the first time we've seen it. Kicking it over to Tasman Stewart, and Tasman is cut down behind the line by number one. That's Jared Baker. A very good defensive player. Yeah, Coach Gayran spoke highly of him when I talked with him this week. He's only a junior for this Wildcat team, so he'll be back next year. Undersized at 5'7", 155 yards, five pounds, but you saw his speed to tackle the very quick Tasman Stewart at the line of scrimmage. Ten minutes left to go here in this football game, 35 to seven, and the Yellow Jackets trying to get another first down. They've got a long third down play here. This is the shotgun. Benton's got plenty of time. Benton finds his receiver. Nice leaping effort by number 18. I think it's again Brant Farlow. And Farlow, who was missed on that last pass a minute ago, makes the good grab across the middle and moves the change. And Jared Baker on the tackle there, but it was just a good pass, as you'll see. Higgins, I mean, this kid, when it's a 10, 15-yard route, he's going to fire it in there. I'm sure a lot of these guys, uh, his wide receivers, have taken some uh, missiles from this guy yeah. as far as his uh, passing arm goes. And well, you know, Coach Nolan Gill coached Marcus Randall yeah. over at Glen Oaks. So he's got some experience coaching some quarterbacks. Here we go. It's going to be a handoff to Mitchell, and Mitchell just gets Pelay. Stewart. Mitchell is Stewart. coming up in I'm November. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Stewart. <laughs> Tasman Stewart. Not Tasman Mitchell. Tasman Mitchell will be shooting some jump shots and whatnot later on this season. Me and my wife had a bet who would make the mistake first, Mitchell or uh, Stewart, and you just won me some money. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Hey, look at that, a Boston Red Sox hat. Uh, Not the Cubs. Well, no, maybe next year, Jimmy. Man, next you year. always say that's like the Saints. <laughs> maybe next year. Well, no. <laughs> Here's Benton Higgins. Higgins once again looking across the middle, this time a little bit behind his receiver. Again, looking for Cousineau. 
and just a little bit behind him. Okay, like, I like what you said. He fires that football in there across the middle. He also, you know, when he was uh, going back to pass there, Jimmy, he's just got it, you know, where you're supposed to have it right there by your right ear. And I mean, he's got good mechanics as a quarterback. And we'll see if Denham Springs can pick it, pick up a first down. You know, they've been moving the ball here in the second half, but their drives are breaking down as they get deeper and deeper into Walker territory. That's a good little dance there, Jimmy. You gotta learn that one tomorrow night. Homecoming, you know. Yes, it is. This pass is caught by Cousineau. Aaron makes a great grab, and again, just enough for a first down, and it gets out of bounds. Well, it doesn't really matter because the clock stops on the chain movement, but another great firing strike by Higgins. Jacob Breeden on the stop for Walker, but they've been rolling Higgins out of the pocket a few times here, and it allows him to catch his wide receivers down the field. Cousineau making the catch that time, the senior, and for Denham Springs, this might be their deepest penetration into the uh, Walker ter into Walker territory all night long. Oh, they have got a first and 10, the ball resting at the 27 yard line, and that one's gonna be stopped very short of even the line of scrimmage. As such great penetration, that time by Dylan Teal, he leads the charge, and they lose a yard, maybe two yards, two yards actually, and the ball's almost all the way back to the 29 yard line. Approaching the eight minute mark in this football game as Denham trying to get some scores on and who's that cat there? Huh? Wow, not Darth Vader, I don't know what he's. <laughs> that's Zorro. Is that Zorro? The green Zorro. He's a fly swat. Supposed hey, to have swat a the, he's trying to swat the, uh, swat the yellow jacket. Oh, I and there's a nice little dump off to number 18 as he gets his way through there. That's Farlow again. Farlow's making some big catches and he gets another first down. Yeah, Farlow this year has four catches. He's caught a touchdown pass, and he's made some nice plays here as there is an injured Walker player on the field. But in, you know, one thing that I've noticed, you know, these Denham Spring wide receivers, they don't mind going in over the middle of the field to make some catches because they know their quarterback's going to get it to them. And that injured Walker player is Jared Baker, and we've mentioned him a few times here tonight, and we've seen a couple injuries here tonight, Jimmy. Yeah, and hopefully none of them are serious, but he's up. I think he just kind of got uh, the wind knocked out of him a little bit as he was rolled up on that on that tackle, but he did make the make a good stop or at least help out on that good stop. The most serious injury we saw tonight was Deion Grayer, but I look on the Walker sidelines and he's got both of his uh, shoes back out. He's got the good. left ankle taped quite a bit, but they, he actually had a have assistance to get off the football field, but looks like he's gonna be all right. He'll live to see another day. Three receivers to the top of the screen now, and again, Higgins calls for the football. A little play action, but not much of a fake. Finds his oh. man, oh, just out over and out throws him as he was looking for Turner, and he has laid Turner out an awful lot tonight as he just a little bit out of the reach of Turner. Well, Adam Parker came into the football game for the injured Jared Baker, and Denham Springs went to work on him right away as Parker missed his man, and that allowed a wide open Denham Springs receiver in the end zone, but Higgins unfortunately misfired on that pass. Again, Higgins finds his receiver, another great catch by Pusho. Pusho in traffic, catches it at the five yard line, and, and these Denham Springs Yellow Jackets are not gonna quit. 7.15 left to go here in this football game. A little bit of a moral victory for Noah Gill, and I'm not exactly how to describe that one there, Jimmy. How long does it take to paint your body like that? that I don't know. I've never <laughs> tried it, nor have I timed it. I like the tie, though. I'm That's gonna have to good. borrow that for next week. It's definitely a good look for you. <laughs> These guys don't have to worry about Halloween next week, and they got their costumes all set tonight. Here we go. It's going to be a draw by the quarterback. Got some running room. Is he in for the score? He's in. Touchdown for Higgins. Higgins, a nice, tough run that time up the middle, and he battles his way in from five yards out, and that is an excellent effort. Like you said, we probably won't give him 
enough for the tough for the victory, but a good moral victory on that drive. Well, there was some good play calling on that offensive drive. They really mixed in the run and the pass and good determination by Higgins to get in there. Jared Baker just a little bit late. He was the injured Wildcat player a couple of plays ago, so it was good to see him back in there. But Denham Springs, their first offensive touchdown of the night. And look at this. The option to Pucho. Pucho barrels his way in for the two-point conversion. Nice effort for Pucho to just lower his shoulder and battle his way in on the two-point conversion. 35 to 15 is our score. 641 left to go in this football game. The Yellow Jackets will not die. And they've got some life left in them. Don't go anywhere, folks. We are at Walker High School for the Box 4 Game of the Week. These days, my garden is my therapy. There's always something new in bloom. Taking care of my husband has been a full-time job. When he broke his hip, I stayed in the hospital with him the entire time. Now, some places might treat you like a pest, but the people at Baton Rouge General just took me under their wing. I'd go down to the kitchen at night and they'd say, are you getting enough to eat? They treated us like part of the family. Pat O'Pia, Baton Rouge. Who's tired of paying $5 for a bag of peanuts? Who's tired of paying huge overage charges to your wireless company? But what if Sprint got rid of ugly overages? Check it out. With the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible Plan, 100 extra minutes never cost more than $10. Other plans charge at least $40, so talk all you want. Or talk less and pay less. You uh, went over your barbecue minutes. Sprint PCS. Now that's better. It was an onside kick, and the Wildcats will recover it. Let's take a look again, Jeffrey, at the touchdown, the sprint instant replay. A great job there by Benton Higgins. Well, Benton Higgins has played well here in the second half, and they've run this quarterback draw a few times, and good job by the offensive line, creating a bit of a scene for Higgins to run in there to score. And for Higgins, that is his fourth touchdown run of the season. Let me tell you something, he didn't break the plane by much. No, no, he did not break the plane by much. He did break it, but man alive, that was close. Nice job for Higgins. All right, we've got 6.41 left to go here in this football game, and it's going to be Chris Hawkins. Hawkins takes a lick. You saw his head snap back a little bit. Nice job for Jaro right there to make the stop from his defensive end stuck spot. Well, the Denham Springs defense has played much better here in the second half, and the big difference is, is they're making tackles, which they right. had a hard time doing in the first half, and they've been able to slow Chris Hawkins down here a little bit, and it'll be interesting to see how long Coach Gayran goes with Hawkins with the 20-point lead midway here through the fourth quarter, I would imagine. You know, run some clock here, and this will be the last try for the Walker first-team offense. Well, you know, they did have to retape his ankle. He had a little bit of an ankle sprain. He's been running very well since then as he gets that counter handoff, and he gets another three yards. That'll bring up a third down in about five, maybe six. Didn't quite get three yards that time, my friend. Jimmy, on that peak performance physical therapy drive summary, it was 13 plays for Denham Springs, 60 yards, and then that touchdown by Higgins, the Yellow Jackets' first touchdown of the night. Offensively, they had a touchdown back in the first quarter, a 70-yard fumble return for a touchdown. One of the more exciting plays, and I would imagine that highlight will be can be found on the internet this week. Right? Absolutely. Cox.com backslash Baton Rouge, the Cox 4 icon. We'll be back right after this. The Walker Wildcats leading here late in the football game on the Cox 4 game of the week. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat everyone from blue chip athletes to blue collar workers, now with six locations to serve you. If your doctor recommends physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, the physical therapy choice of athletes, their fans, and everyone in between. Lease the Jaguar X-Type for only $329 a month and enjoy more power than the BMW 325 and more standard amenities than the Audi A4. Drive the Jaguar X-Type and experience the only car in its class with permanent all-wheel drive, standard. Lease the Jaguar X-Type for only $329 a month. Visit Peretti Jaguar Baton Rouge today. 
At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat everyone from soccer stars to soccer moms. Now with six locations to serve you. If your doctor recommends physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name. The physical therapy choice of athletes and their moms and everyone in between. Six minutes left to go, make it five minutes left to go, and this one is going to be caught on a nice little throw to Todrick Stevenson. Stevenson has caught one touchdown pass already tonight, and that one's another big gain to the 20, to the 35-yard line. Nice play that time for Lockhart. He doesn't throw the ball very often, but when he does, he is an accurate, accurate quarterback. And when Walker scored three touchdowns in the second quarter, they converted a lot of third downs, and that time they did it again, third down and six. Lockhart finding his running back, Stevenson. They've connected for a few times here tonight. He put in a touchdown, and good job by Denham Springs defense to finally get, that, get him, wrap him up before he breaks it for a long one. Here we go, the full house backfield handoff to Wren, the sophomore fullback. He barrels his way for a first down and 12 yards total as he gets to the 22-yard line. Well, we'll call it the 21 is where they spot it. Nice run by the fire plug. Yeah, he's only a sophomore, a steady running back. He's the guy they count on for some tough yardage, and you're going to see some tough yardage here once he gets into the secondary of Denham Springs as he's going to be carrying a couple of defenders for a few yards. And Walker all of a sudden marching down the field once again. Last week I think he had 62 yards in the victory over Riverdale. And again they've got that uh, wishbone type of uh, backfield set up and this is going to be Stevenson. He's at the five touchdown. He breaks two tackles and he goes into the end zone and that makes it 41. <laughs> 14. No, make it 50. <laughs> my, my calculator was off. <laughs> well, Todrick Stevenson gets his second touchdown of the night. Just uh, he almost fumbled the handoff. We've seen that a couple times here tonight. Chris Hawkins almost fumbled the handoff, but ran into the end zone. And again, he uh, breaks the snap or breaks the tackle after finally giving his hands on the football. Timeout is going to be called by Walker. We're going to keep it right here as you see Coach Gayran right there. I'm sure he's not real happy with the fact that they couldn't get the extra point team on there, but nonetheless, they're still with a big victory, and 41 to 15 is their lead. Here comes the replay once again. Look at Stevenson juggling the football, so he has to pause there for a second, and then, I mean, just great job by the Walker offensive line to open up a hole, and even though he fumbled, the handoff, or at least, yeah, I guess juggled the handoff is probably the uh, correct term. He still basically went into the end zone untouched. Yeah, yeah, that was a huge hole up the middle, like you said. That left side of the offensive line, magnificent job. Opening it up, man, they've just got a stable of backs. That is yeah. just impressive. With well, Hawkins. Uh, well, from what I understand, Jimmy, uh, Walker has had a long history of great running backs here. And it's one thing that they've always had. And they got maybe one of the better ones here at Chris Hawkins. And, you know, looks like uh, after Hawkins graduates, you know, you're going to have Stevenson and Brent's going to be here for a couple of years. Another perfect Peretti point after. As we see Mears put it through once again. He's done it six times tonight. And it's now 42 to 15, four minutes, 20 seconds left to go here in this football game. And, and Jeff, uh, a young Denham Springs football team here, and they've, uh, they've gotten a little bit of a lesson offensively. And I think this is just a breakout game for the Walker Wildcats. It's a big one, not only district-wise, but also in terms of this Livingston Parish rivalry. And confidence-wise, going right. down to the stretch run with two more weeks left, and every victory at this point is a crucial one. As Coach Gayran, uh, I think one day he'll smile about this <laughs> one. He doesn't look too happy. He looks like he's down by uh, 28 points or 27 points, but his team is actually winning this football game as they have been Great. dominant here tonight. And very look again at the Todrick Stevenson touchdown run. Had the long catch for a touchdown run earlier today. Another missed tackle there. One thing Denham Springs has been able to do better here in the second half is tackle because in the first half they missed, uh, man, they missed, it seemed like a handful on every Walker play. Jareth Mears is getting a workout, kicking the ball off. 
It will be taken at the nine yard line by Turner. Turner tries to turn the corner and he does and he is upended at the 27, 28 yard line is where they'll spot it. And there's a flag down on the far sideline, Jeff, near where the tackle was made with 413 left to go here in this football game. You can tell we're late in the season because we haven't seen too many flags. It's been, yeah, it's been a very well played football game in terms of penalties and here's the Here's Ron Sanders. They have an illegal block in the back against the return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Crucial penalty, I guess. I mean, when you, when you think about it, it's going to give them a, a, a much worse field position. But uh, I was very surprised on the long fumble recovery that there were no penalties. Yeah. Not, not because I didn't think these guys could do it without that, but it's just so often you see a great play and it comes back due to a penalty. Good shot of the Walker offensive line. They've done an excellent job tonight opening holes for the Wildcat running backs. There's a nice pass oh. and almost a great reception for Farlow. And that would have been enough for a first down, but it does stop the clock, and we're down to 4.06. He really, he, he came on here late in this football game and has made some exceptional catches across the middle. And again, you got to give Higgins a big high five for his ability to, one, roll out and throw the football on, on a rope. Well, it, unfortunately, just we're never able to get a running game going here in this this contest and the passing game wasn't clicking at all in the first half. But uh, they've shown some life offensively here in the second half, more importantly in the uh, fourth quarter. This pass incomplete once again brings up third down and 10. There's a shot at number 57, Matt Hill, the junior. Cusho, the intended wide receiver, he's uh, had a long night tonight. Is, uh, <laughs> Been running his routes. He's made some catches tonight. Jimmy, yeah. a pretty uh, we 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 got the show tonight here from Chris Hawkins, but we're going to see a great football game next week. Boy, you Lutcher and St. James. That's always a battle. Of course, you've got Lutcher, who you know is the state champion, by the way, defending state 3A champion. It's a district matchup. And St. James coming off a tough year last year, but they're doing much, much better this year. This one's up for grabs, and it's going to be intercepted by Todrick Stevenson. No doubt about that as he takes it to 45. He may run it all the way back. It's a foot race to the 10-yard line, to the 5. Does he stay in bounds? No, he stepped out of bounds at the 5. Wow, a 40-yard return on that. But there's a flag down in the middle of the field at about the 20-yard line. Second time Higgins has been intercepted here tonight. And that's what's kind of ironic about it is he threw the first interception of Hawkins and he's got four touchdowns. Back tonight. against Walker, 10 yard penalty to the spot of the foul. He's got two touchdowns. First tonight. down, Walker. He had all day to throw that football and then I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, Jimmy. And he's, he's very good at throwing those intermediate short routes, yeah. but when it comes to the long ball, that's where it's a bit of a weakness. And then good shot here by our cameraman down on the sidelines is get a good look at Stevenson returning that football and does he step out of bounds yes he does right at the uh, six yard line but a penalty brings it all the way back to the Denham Springs 31. It was a holding call on the return and a good job there by Kevin White and also our prime industrial shot for the man lift Diego Cortez doing a fabulous job up in the lift. Thomas Davis also on the sideline. Rusty Alford as well. They do a fabulous job. This is a new running back as we see number 33. That's uh, Michael Kitzmiller. He's only a sophomore. 5'4". A sophomore. Boy. 146 pounds. Running the ball hard. Let's look at Higgins again throwing all day. He kind of pump fakes and threw off his back foot a little bit. Too. Yeah, that, that, good point there, Jimmy. And he just undershot his wide receiver as uh, Stevenson trying to take it to the house, but stepped out of bounds there at the last second. Well, they still knock on the door with 3.09 left to go here in this football game. It is 42 to 15. It has been all Walker Wildcats, Todrick Stevenson, and another handoff this time to the sophomore, Kitz Miller. You gotta like this Kitz Miller kid, huh? Yeah, he's a, a Rudy version of Walker. I mean, look how small that kid is out there, but he's, hey, he's got a big heart. And big he's heart, but I mean, heart. you think about Trenton Holiday, who's running for Northeast, he's only 5'5". Five five. Yeah. Skylar Green's 5'5". Five five. Skylar Green's taller. Is he? He's not listed that way in the media. Guys. 
I don't know. I, I, he's much taller than five five. You're thinking of Chiron Carey. Chiron Carey. I'm sorry. I was going to say Skylar Green. My fault. There's another run by Kitz Miller. Kitz Miller's going to get some yardage here. He gets the first down. The problem is he's got 15 yards on this little drive. You can't see him on the field. You, you see the Denham Spring defender, Paul Kitchen, watch it on the sprint into the replay. Kitchen ran right by it. He didn't even know he had the ball. Couldn't even see it. This Kitz Miller, though, I, gotta, I like this kid. I got to join this fan club. He runs the ball real good for him. If I was 146 pounds out there, I would uh, I'd be scared. I'd be running yeah, the other well, way. Yeah, well, you'd be scared even if you weren't 146 pounds. <laughs> 158 and the clock continues to tick here. It's first down. And again, the eye formation. It's uh, actually uh, Bryce Bache back in the, uh, he gets oh, the first down. I mean, he gets the uh, handoff. Fumble. And there's a fumble on the play. And it will be number 94. That's Jaro coming up with the football for the Denham Springs Yellow Jackets, and they'll turn it over on possession, and they'll take over with 143 left. They just stripped the football away from Kitzmiller before his knee hit the ball, or before his knee hit the ground. And trust me, there's not much room between the ground and his knee, so they got to the ball quickly to knock it away. But uh, Denham Springs will have one more chance. Look at it. This is the game, Jimmy. We might be, we should be calling. Look Tell us. That's the future Walker faithful right there. The future, Look at this future, this, that could be draw this the, uh, up. Draw that play up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That's some of the renegades, I bet you. <laughs> this one is uh, caught, and the pass will continue, and the clock will continue to roll with one minute, 29 seconds left to go. A five yard pickup on the catch, and it brings up a second and five. Rolling out is Higgins. Higgins looks right, now back to the receiver, Turner, and Turner will be met by number 10. That's uh, Casey Jensen, a junior, and he makes a good tackle on the sidelines, but it is enough for a first down, and that stops the clock at 114. Another good, a lot of Denham Springs offense, a lot of out patterns, and I tell you, Higgins delivers that ball to the uh, wide receiver quickly. He doesn't waste a... I mean, you know, he's got he's got some zip on the football. That was also a great tackle by Jensen. He comes in late in the game, and yeah. you know he hadn't been in the game at all tonight, and he makes a good tackle over there. He wraps him up and gets him on the ground and out of bounds. Didn't let him get any more than he was already had caught football for. And here's going to be Pusho. Pusho gets out of bounds, and they will stop the clock there. 61 seconds left to go. Got to give a. The Yellow Jackets some credit for continuing to battle in this one. And not giving up at all, despite what the scoreboard says. But really the second quarter, the key in this football game, Walker scoring 20, 21 unanswered points after Denham Springs scored on a fumble return for a touchdown. And that really put this game out of reach for the Yellow Jackets. Here's another long pass and it's going to be, oh, could have been intercepted that time as it goes right through the hands of Jacob Breeden, the junior cornerback, and he just, uh, man, it just slipped right through his hands. Uh, good coverage that time on Turner. Pass under thrown and that allowed the Walker defenders to have an opportunity at the interception. We'll look at it here on the sprint instant replay. Well, oh, there's uh, still getting it set up here. There you go. As Higgins trying to get it down there, and, and that's just the thing, Jimmy. Just not very good throwing the, uh, the long ball. 52 seconds left to go here. Higgins will throw the ball a little bit short to his intended receiver. It has been an exceptional football game. We sure have enjoyed coming out to Livingston Parish for this football game. And you know, we talked about it, Jeff. Throw out the record. It doesn't matter who's got one loss, who's got, you know, who's got them all. The Walker Wildcats come into this football game fired up and ready to put on a show, and they did just that offensively, and they did a great job defensively. But you got to give the Denham Springs Yellow Jackets a very young team, and they're going to be back next year to, uh, to really give some guys some fits, I bet you. 46 seconds, the clock is stopped, and now it's rolling once again as Higgins will bounce it off the shoulder pad of Turner. And there's a flag down. And yeah, might have defensive pass interference here on Walker. You see Coach Nolan Gill right there. 
his coaching staff. He was very pleased with the way his guys have fought through a long, hot summer. He had 120 guys out. Pass in the fifth against Walker, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. You said it, uh, pass interference that time. That gives him a first down. Yeah, both of these teams have really improved their off-season conditioning. Yeah. And you can see the results uh, for Walker, but uh, as Nick Saban says, sometimes it's a process, and that's the way Denham Springs needs to look, is contact just a little bit too early. Jacob Breeden hitting Lionel Turner, or uh, actually Jeremy Turner. Man, before he got the pass. Didn't know Lionel Turner had stepped back down <laughs> a classification or two. Jaro, the fullback, is going to go out of bounds after making the catch. And uh, he's going to be about a yard shy, or maybe two yards shy of the first down. But he does get out of bounds, stopping the clock with 35 seconds. We will be in St. James Parish next week for the melee on the Mississippi. Yeah. It's St. James versus Lutcher. That is always a battle. I mean, we, everybody, we really kind of, we, we have, we've really been excited about these last three regular season football games with our rivalry Friday nights. And it will be Higgins, a little quarterback draw, and it was snipped out. He gets the first down, but he's going to be wrapped up after that. He gets about three yards, maybe four on the carry. The clock stops with 27 seconds. Well, Jimmy got to thank our crew. He's done an excellent job under the heat and timeout here by uh, Denham Springs. I mean, two weeks ago, it was torrential rain. Yeah. Last week, it was absolutely beautiful and perfect. This week, we go back to the heat. I mean, literally, it feels like August. Yeah. But we really need to thank all the folks at, uh, at Denham Springs High School for all the help that they gave us. Uh, that's that's uh, Butch Wax, the principal over there. And also, of course, Mr. Steve Long, the principal here at Walker High School. We want to thank Coach Gayran for all the uh, accommodations that he gave us, and Coach Nolan Gill over at Denham Springs. Everybody very accommodating and hospitable to us. And uh, we really want to thank the folks uh, that have had us here. Don't forget, we will be at Denham's, excuse me, at uh, St. James next week for St. James and Letcher as the defending 3A state champs Letcher Bulldogs take on St. James, another Wildcat team. Amazingly, when you think about it, the St. James leads that series that they've had for quite some time. I think they've won 10 or 12 out of the series, and that one is going to be intended for Turner, and it's way out of bounds. 20 seconds left to go. Jeremy Turner still running there, and <laughs> headed up all the way uh, towards the fence. Thinking about going to the bus. The but again, it's been a great football game here. Glad that you've joined us on the Cotsboro Game of the Week. We'll have two more regular season football games, then we'll have our four playoff games, and then we move right into basketball, Jeff Palermo. We don't miss a beat. Of course, Denham Springs has a heck of a basketball team led by Tasman Mitchell, a commitment to LSU. And there is a good catch by Jaro, the fullback. And he stays in bounds with 13 seconds, and that could do it. We may have one more. Nope, they're going to call a timeout. Well, we, took, we talked to uh, Coach Paul Smith earlier yeah. today, Jimmy. And uh, he said that uh, they'll, they'll win a couple of games this season. He yeah, he was. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how coaches will say, yeah, you know, we we're not that right. good. We're not that good. <laughs> but uh, Denham Springs is is uh, expected to make a, a long run and should end up back in Lafayette. They've uh, been stopped the last couple of years, their basketball team, and getting into the state championship game. But maybe this is a year with uh, Tasman Mitchell getting his uh, final season yeah. at, at Denham Springs. And one of the best players, not only in the state, but in the country. They're making some pretty big trips. They're going to stay a week in, in Fort Myers, right. Florida. Then they travel to North Carolina, I believe, later on after Christmas. And then they're going to make a trip to New York, to yeah. Rochester. Uh, to spend one day, they're going up there, they're going to play a game and come on back. That's a neat little deal. Nine seconds left to go here in this football game. One more play, maybe two. And Denham Springs waiting to get somebody else on the football field. Let's see. 
Oh, they're putting 14 seconds back on the clock. So instead of nine, there's now 14 ticks. So they may have two more plays. Higgins will set up. Of course, you've got five receivers, nobody in the backfield. Throwing up the football, and it's going to Pusho. Pusho makes the catch at the two. He's in for the score. Huh. Unbelievable. One last there's play. There's a flag, Jimmy. Oh, my goodness. There's a flag at the line of scrimmage. Oh, I hope it's just hope for the Denham Springs Yellow Jackets. that First it foul it on Walker. So they... Wow. After the touchdown is good. The touchdown is good. It's seven. Just and that is a big play at the end of this football game. And we have seen some amazing touchdowns in this football game, Jimmy. And I don't know. Al Pucho caught that football. It seemed like the ball was going to get knocked away from him. And we've been uh, criticizing Benton Higgins for throwing the long ball or the way he throws it all night. And this time, this is perfect almost. Yeah. Is, I mean, you can't ask for a better thrown football there to Pucho. And Walker's defensive uh, player, Hunter Picker, or not Hunter Picker, but A.J. Schubert, he thought for sure he was going to knock that football away. That was a heck of a pass and a great catch. Well, it's now 42 to 21. That two-point conversion, it's a handoff. No, it's a little quick screen pass to Pusho, and Pusho's in for the two-point conversion. Well, they just didn't say die. They just would never give up, and you got to give the Yellow Jackets a lot of high fives for that attitude. And That's the prime industrial shot of the night right there. What a throw by Higgins. Beautiful job. 42-23 with eight seconds to go. They'll kick it off, maybe run one more play, and that's going to do it for this football game. There's Nolan Gill. Very happy. He doesn't want to lose, obviously, but he's got to be pleased with the way his football team has played late in this football game. Never give it up. And throwing the football very well. I really like the way they throw the passes in the middle, make those catches, short, quick passes. The offensive line gets a lot of kudos. Two fourth quarter touchdowns here for uh, Denham Springs. And by the way, Jimmy, that is the first touchdown pass of the season for Mr. Benton Higgins. Congratulations to him and the Yellow Jacket. It's not going to be a, enough to defeat these Wildcats, but nonetheless, they come away with some positive things to work on. And I've never seen a bunch of a bunch quite like this on the uh, on the onside kick. Now they break up just a tad, but not much. Now well, they'll break up and spread out a lot more. And this kick is going to be kicked away. Not an onside kick, and it will be taken by Hawkins. Hawkins at the 10-yard line, and he downs it. They will down it right there with six seconds left to go, and they'll play one more offensive play, Jeff Pilar. I would imagine they'll just deal on this one. And I would think so. That'll be the end of the game for Walker and for the uh, Wildcats. Instead, focus on Central. Yep. If they get a win there. Take on Woodlawn in the game for both teams, Jimmy. Yeah. The winner of that game may go to the playoffs. Exactly right. And we're going to be really taking a look over the next week or so. Uh, who's going to be going where? We'll start talking about uh, what districts are, or how things are going in each district probably next week when we have the Lutcher game. Lutcher St. James at St. James will be our rivalry Friday night, melee on the Mississippi. And that will do it for this football game. For myself, Jimmy Frederick. Jeff Palermo, the, our color analyst, does a magnificent job. And Tressy Leindecker, who was not here tonight, but for Nikki Martin on the sideline, we certainly appreciate you guys and everyone watching this football game. Walker Wildcats win this football game 42 to 23 over the Denham Springs Yellow Jackets. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you next week from St. James.
title card and the music coming up. Only from Music Choice. Bernard learned at a very young age that turning in something used can be both courteous and beneficial. Today he visits FYE before every meal. FYE pays top dollar for used CDs, DVDs, and video games. FYE for your entertainment. Since Carl sold his...